Hey guys, welcome back to another Protein Bros episode. We have an awesome, awesome, awesome group of people on today. It's our friends, Phil Stewart and Braden Posey. They are the owners of Kitsch Meals here in Kansas City, Missouri. There's two locations. They are a pre-prepared meal service and they, these guys do it better than anybody we've seen. They have the absolute highest quality food. Uh, the flavor is unbelievable. Um, we get to talk a little bit more about how they came to be, you know, what they felt like the prepared meals, you know, or pr meal prep services were missing uh, and, and, the, and how they solved those problems. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, starting a business, entrepreneurship, and also just what they're dealing with now as far as, as costs of things change and what to expect from uh, Kitchen Meals moving forward. Um, hope you guys enjoy the listen. As always, we appreciate you liking, subscribing, and sharing the podcast as we do not do any kind of ads. So that's just our one ask for you. Please let people know about the podcast and uh, let's get right to the episode. You guys are in the prepared meals. And for our listeners, that would mean like your classic meal prep restaurants. Yes. Is that the right terminology? Am I, am I giving it the proper respect? Yeah, we call them like pre-prepared -pre meals, uh, ready meals, um, basically healthy options that you can buy on the go, you know, microwave at home. Dude, uh, I've been, I've been privileged to be able to see you guys grow this, um, since, you know, it's inception as far as like you guys is first getting into the creativity of it, building out the menus. And it seems like everything that we were having an issue with, with different meal prep places in Kansas city, you guys addressed what was like some of the things that you guys felt like were just a absolute must when it came to starting this brand from scratch. I mean, I think you have to successfully marry like flavor and nutrition. Like people want both, you know, so Brady can speak more to it, but I think those are fundamentally, that's what you have to really nail. You know? What do you think we were lacking in this market prior? Well, it's funny because everyone, well, everyone talks about like eating well and they talk about, you know, Hey, you need chicken and rice and all these traditional meals. But what they forget is for the average person, the thing that's stopping them is not the fact that, they, you know, can't make that simple meal. It's the fact they get tired of eating it. Yeah, it's not a repeatable action, you know. Yeah. Like the diet that you can adhere to, you know, the longest period of time, you know, in the longest period of time being ideally your whole life, that's what you should stick with, whatever that is, you know. The, the ultimate goal was basically that when somebody came in and they bought one of our meals, if they put that in the fridge at home and their grandpa grabbed it and he was an old school guy and he didn't eat healthy and, you know, he just saw it and it was our mac and cheese, you know, it's got great protein and, you know, higher macros are better that he could heat it up in the microwave and he would eat it and he'd go, Oh my God, that's really good mac and cheese. And he wouldn't think twice that, that was a healthy meal. Right. And so right. that's always been the litmus test for us when we're trying to design plates. It's like, Hey, if somebody was not health focused where they're you know, willing to eat a piece of cardboard, if it's going to give them abs, you know, will they grab this, heat it up and go, man, this is, yeah, I'll do this. I'll do this for lunch. No big deal. And yeah, that's a win. Yeah. And what do people like? You know, people like hamburgers, right? People like, you know, quesadillas, people like all these traditional foods and like, okay, well, how do you make that? A little healthier, you know, and like one of our most popular meals is like the burger bowl because mm -hmm. it's phenomenal, you know, and the macros are good. They just happen to be good, but the flavor is forward, you know, and that's why people like it because it tastes good. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all humans. Like we all want something that tastes good. We don't, you know, most of us aren't robotic, you know, but that's what it needed. It needed flavor and nutrition. Even like yeah. your most <clears throat> traditional meal of, I believe it was like a lemon pepper chicken and rice yeah. type of meal. Phenomenal as far as flavor goes, how do you guys make a chicken in a microwave? One of the toughest parts, cause you know what they're dealing with, right? Everybody's going to go home and they're going to have to microwave this meal. How do we make that taste as tender Dude, and I'll, juicy as it gets? I'll give you, know you a life I mean? hack. I'll give you something that'll change your whole life. When you go home and you, you cook anything in the microwave, that's a meat, put it on 50% power and double the time. And it will, it will change everything you've ever thought of, of microwave food. Yeah. And that's actually a good point. You know, yeah. I mean, I did now, do it that way and I don't do my other meals like that. Like yeah. my own meal prep that I make or whatever, like I won't microwave it on 50% power. Well, and the yeah. thing is like we make it so it's juicier. Like our, our cooking process is phenomenal, but there's also an education aspect of like, if you went and you want to make a pizza in the oven, you put the oven to 600 degrees, you put it in there for 10 minutes, it's going to burn the heck out of it. And then people go home and they don't take that same type of care in a meal that is designed to be heated up in a certain way. And it seems like such a small thing, right? It's just microwaving food. It's not a big mm. deal, but at the end of the day, if you can have that food taste better, again, you can enjoy it better. It's prepared better. It's microwaved in a way that is bringing it up to temperature in the way that the chef thought it should be. You're going to have a superior product. And for us, it wasn't just creating great food. We wanted to do that, and we did. But it was about having that next level of like, hey, not only are we making great food, we're telling you how to actually make it better at home, even if it is just a simple change. But no one else is telling you that. Yeah. 
Yeah. So for our listeners that might not know, uh, me and Jeff have worked together with uh, Phil and Braden for a very long time. And, uh, coming their, up in like 10 years. Their other oh, yeah. endeavor. It's been a long time. Which uh, Braden and Phil were the uh, first franchisees of supplement superstores to ever exist. Yep. And uh, they worked with us. They worked, both of them worked with me in St. Louis for a long time. And then they opened up supplement superstores in mid Missouri first yep. and foremost. And then like, it, <clears throat> so th- my question to you guys is, you know, you guys were successful with that. You guys were able to open up stores in, in Columbia um, and then eventually well, yeah. open up stores in, in Illinois. And then when I heard you guys were going to start a meal prep service, what was it like making the decision to step outside of the framework of a franchise into doing something that was basically you, uh, totally you guys' idea, your, your branding, um, basically your nuts on the line completely. What was that process starting, like? Starting it from scratch. It's awesome. You can answer that. This is actually kind of funny. I was at HQ, um, and I, I happened to be walking by Andy one day, and I, I grabbed him and I said, hey, man, I just want to let you know, uh, we started this meal brand. It's going pretty good, but, dude, it's really hard when you don't have the whole framework. And he just laughed. And he goes, yeah, it fucking is. And the reality is when you started from scratch, there is so much value in having somebody come before you and give you you know, the branding and the ideas and, hey, this is the suppliers and all that. So we had to learn all that. And it was a great, a great learning curve for us, I think, just as entrepreneurs generally. But, I mean, it was a it was definitely a slog because it was just all new. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. you guys remember when you started S2s. Mm-hmm. It's like you knew a lot, but there was still stuff. It's like, oh, my God. I've when you don't have the through. proof in quotes, like if you don't have the, you yeah. know, the, the, we came from stores that were, you were, you know, we're seeing so many people a day. Yeah. When mm-hmm. you open up your first store, all of a sudden you're seeing no people a day. Yep. And you're just like, oh, wait a second. Do I really know what I'm doing? Do yeah. I really know what I'm doing? Yeah. And all the questions start to come in, you know. Sure. Am I worthy all the doubts. And, yeah. You know? Right. I would say like with S2, it's because. We spent, you know, a good amount of time working through like what worked and what didn't work in the world of customer service. And, um, you know, it took a very long time to figure that out. And we made a ton of mistakes along the way with S2. And so every time that I would think about Kitsch and you guys starting that, it's basically like resetting the clock on all those mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Because and I. I was like with say, a different business right. in a different, you know, get it going, make mistakes, learn from them, move forward. Well, it's going. it's yeah. a product business too. Right. So it's, it's the service side of like, Hey, you're, you're delivering a service. You know, we've got great retail staff. Um, but it's also, Hey, now we're fulfilling the back end of it, which was the whole, I mean, that was really the challenge was, you know, we're, we're creating the product this time and it's got a shelf life of, you know, X amount of days, which is totally different from protein, which might be, you know, two years. Two years. Yeah. So that was really the pivot. And, you know, I would just caution other entrepreneurs, just always be thoughtful of like what industry you're in. Cause it's easy to say, oh my God, I do roofing. It can't be that hard to do carpentry. Maybe it's not, but you know, it could be an entirely different thing. Now you need engineers and you need this and that, and, you know, it's, it's just easy to tell yourself all oh, the pivots simple and the pivots challenging, but you know, luckily we've kind of made it through and it's a great brand. And I think people really like what came out of it. Yeah. I've always like, you know, when it comes to doing something outside of, of supplements for me personally, that's the thing that like I would say is admirable about watching you guys is because for me, I've always known in my head, like I know how to do supplements really well. Like I know how to, to create a team and, and to give good customer service. And I know this really well, but stepping outside of that is always made me nervous because, you know, it's just not something that I'm, I'm well versed in. What gave you guys the, uh, the confidence to, to, to know that you were going to do it? Or did you, at some point in your life, do you just have to say, I'm going to take the risk? Yeah. I mean, at some point you just have to say, you're just going to send it, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, like most things in life, but I always say like, you know, quantity is the force of metric quality. And Alex Ramosi says that a lot, but you know, I mean, that remains true in so many, as, you know, facets or aspects of your life. Like you just have to put in a shit ton of volume, you know, to see, you know, whatever's it you like to see. You know, throw a bunch of things at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, building kits, you know, as long as anything's built on the right intention and the right, you know, your relationship with the brand is correct and you're building it for the right reasons, you know, and you've identified something that the, the market is telling you is, is in need of, um, you know, and it's built on the right values and all of those things, you know, then I, you have a higher chance, you know, you have a higher chance, have a higher chance of it being successful. But supplement superstore is by far the best, I think launching pad for any business person though because of what it requires you to do so we always tell this to our hourly guys i'm sure you do too is it teaches you sales you know being able to talk to anyone right 
teaches you leadership if you can get into leadership because it's small team leadership and it's, it's crafting a vision and it's all about growth and personal improvement and all that. And we've been able to translate that to, you know, other stuff we've done. And so for, for that, I think we've always kind of viewed S2 as something we're really grateful for starting in because, you know, I've been around other guys and they'll start something and maybe they're better at the product side or whatever, but they can't get people to work for them because they just don't understand that, that leadership mentality or whatever. And I think, you know, to his credit, what Andy really built at S2 with it filtered down is, you know, how do you grow people? How do you build them? How do you craft a vision? And then how do you treat people well and, you know, do what you need to for them so they stay a long time? Then you have time to figure out whatever you need to figure out. Yeah. I think that where most people are looking to get away from people businesses in recent, you know, years, for me, it's like that's where the opportunity is now. Oh, right? yeah. A lot of people don't, they're trying to get rid of people. They're trying to scale down their workforce. They're trying to automate things. And for me, I'm like, oh, dude, that's the opportunity right there. It's it's because if you, if you know how to, you know, if you know how to create a team and create a culture and, you know, get people to deliver on a, a, a service that's exceptional, now it stands out more than ever because everything's just so automated, you know? And yeah, it makes you indispensable for sure. When you've got all those solo creators, especially with AI now, and the ability to manage a team of, you know, 30 solo creators who are doing the work of what used to be, you know, 40 other people. And now they're doing it because they can leverage AI or whatever mm-hmm. it is. What's a solo creator for our listeners? Brady? Like, I don't even know if that's the correct term, but I, I would just say it like somebody who's, you know, say you're, you're doing, um, you know, some sort of copywriting, right? Sure. And it's like, you used to work for a big firm and you need 30 people to do this, but now you're leveraging what you do you know, using AI, proofreading that. So you're creating a ton of volume of this. Right. And it used to be 20 people had to do that. And now it's just you and a computer and you know, yeah. some really thoughtful looks at that. There's still going to be someone that needs to manage that person. Sure. And I think what people forget about is, and I learned this lesson when I was really young, is uh, there was a guy I knew, he was the dad of some girl that I knew, and uh, he made a ton of money. I think he was working at HP. And he told some story one night of basically there was an issue um, he had to have one of his team memorize a whole presentation for like this really hard technical presentation. And he's like, yeah, the guy's got a photographic memory. So it worked like he, he literally just memorized it over the, the evening and then gave it the next day. It was fine. And I was like, oh my God, how's that guy not your boss? Like he's a, he's brilliant. And I'll never forget. He, he looked at me and he was like, listen, man, being brilliant. Yeah, that's important. But being able to lead brilliant people is what actually gets you successful. And I'll, I'll never forget that because I, I always think of that as sort of the meta skill. And then people want to work for you and they look for leaders. So it's like, I'm not saying we're the best leaders, but, you know, that's what S2 really kind of helps teach you is that that meta skill of like, listen, people will follow me. And then I just have to find talented people that will fill those goals. What, those roles. in yeah. your opinion, is the skills needed for that leader? Like what, what would you say like makes a person dynamic enough to lead somebody that is brilliant? I mean, you probably say the, say the same thing, but I'd say vision, you know, because someone always wants to chase a vision. If they're smart, they know they have options, right? So mm-hmm. you have to c- craft a vision that's true. That and big enough. Chase. Yeah, they them. can chase. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say reliability or doing what you say you do. Because yeah. they're, I mean, staying true to your word is one of the, one of the most, you know, undeniable things that you have to do. Yeah. You know, cause so many people don't do that, you know, and it can be seemingly a small thing, but you know, if, if someone has just undeniable confidence, like it's unshakable that like you will do whatever it is that you say you will do. Well then that's 98% of people's, you know, that's where all the trust and all the loyalty, that's where it, it gets developed is just you just staying true to your word or how fast it erodes. Right. Yeah, yeah for sure. And mm-hmm. I think you need to, I think you need to have some level of enthusiasm cause you know, to have any enthusiasm in someone else, like first you have to have it yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's, for me, I would say it's, it's absolutely fundamental, um, especially if you're leading people, you like, you have to have some aspiration, some legitimate conviction behind what you say. And that means your belief system has to be true, you know? And that's why starting anything, like I think the intention has to be correct. And I think a lot of times people start things for the wrong reasons um, and they start things for, for money or for, you know, what it speaks to other people or for the, you know, the, um, the, the social perspective it might bring and, and those eventually like you will be exposed for those things. Um, and it, and you have to remove your ego from that, you know, that equation. And you have to say, do I actually want to do this for the right reasons? You know, and that can be a difficult question to ask. And those things can change obviously over time, right? As you grow they're up, fluid. As you, they're on a continuum yeah. for sure. When you yeah. guys, um, started talking with your, your team at Kitsch, how was um, crafting that vision for them? How did that differ from supplement superstores and, and what has been the biggest challenges of that? 
I think we were just massively spoiled by just our, our beginnings, you know, started at supplement superstores. And you guys speak to the same thing. I mean, our culture is very unique. You know, it's, it's sometimes it's very difficult to explain to other people because they just don't, they just simply won't get it. You know, it just doesn't really comprehend. I have a, I have a jug of Kool-Aid in our uh, office that when we first opened up here, we got sent in the mail to us because somebody was saying that. With a picture of Jim Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Just as, drinking the Kool-Aid. As a, yeah. as a way of saying like, we see what you're doing. You're a cult. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, in, in some ways. That's like, fine. Call me a cult. I think that's a good thing. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I see that as a good thing, but. You know, I, I just can't spell I, culture without cult. Right. <laughs> <laughs> those four letters you need, you probably really need those. That's great. Um, but I did, I just think that served like so many invaluable things that, uh, honestly, I have to remind myself to not to take for granted, you know, cause we built all of our belief system and experiences based on that. That's what we started with. You know, we started in 2015 with, you know, the store in Columbia. I taught you everything um, you knew. Kyle Combs taught me basically everything. I literally I was like, dude, this guy can't talk to people. He's, yeah. And you, you know, showed me the way. Showed you how to be handsome. Yeah. And I'm just. <laughs> Introduced Brady to his wife. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we, it was built on that, which is it. Uh, I, I'm always just incredibly grateful for that. Um, and you just, you don't know what you don't know. Like that's the, you know, that's the experience that we had. Um, and I just think it helped tremendously, like building and casting the right vision for another brand. It made it unbelievably easier that I think is hard to, to know because that's just what you know. You don't know the opposite. Yeah, we, we tell our guys uh, a lot of times, and actually we, we, have, we have conversations where, you know, um, you'll, you'll, you'll talk to somebody who's in college and, you know, they're talking about, you know, I have this class and this class and this class and, you know, all of us here have college degrees. Is that correct? You have a college degree, don't you? Did you pass? It was, it was a GED. And then <laughs> but, you know, it's like you, you have this college degree. Most of my, most of my classes were around business. Um, and then you work for supplement superstores. And, you know, what people don't know is that working at managing a supplement superstore is you're essentially running the business, right? You're, you're in charge of most of the, the important things when it comes to the business. And, um, you know, it's so, uh, it, it's so easy easy to, you know, understand business more fundamentally once you've been through our system and you've managed a store, you start understanding like what's important in business and what's not, you know, and those are a lot of things that you don't learn in college because in college you're talking about, you know, you're taking econ classes and you're taking, you know, marketing. I took, I have a minor in marketing that basically was obsolete by the time I was taking it. You know, we were talking about a lot of old, old marketing strategies that, you know, don't, don't have a, a lot of uh, value anymore. And, um, you know, you step into this job and there's just, you know, you're like, oh, okay, now I'm starting to understand like how to implement real business practices. And I'm sure that that, you know, helped you guys as well as, you know, when you get went into other businesses is basically, you know, supplement superstores has such a, uh, a way of developing, you know, yeah. those, those business, uh, Practices, Kyle? Yeah, or character traits or practices. Skills. Yeah. Well, the, pro know. the problem, sure. too, though, is that college doesn't teach you anything relating to entrepreneurship at all. No. Yeah. I mean, it's no. not at all. Mm -hmm. well, not even entrepreneurship by... class. <laughs> no, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, some guy's 65. He's yeah. like, yeah, I had an ice cream stand when I was 20. And you're like, dude. Yeah, man, it's tough to, um, yeah, it's tough. Our to, college is to really not hiring that. professors that, like, have active businesses. If they're teaching entrepreneur classes, I think if you go to Stanford, you're yeah. probably going to find somebody that's pretty it legit. Is like a legit. I think tech if you're dude. at, and this isn't a knock on the regional schools, but I think if you go to a small regional school in Iowa, right, or something, they just don't have. You're There's not going to find a supply problem probably there. Yeah, you're yeah. not going to find somebody that just you know finished as the fifth guy in Facebook and now he wants to teach. Yeah, right. So that's the challenge. And then you know, I, I think the biggest skill for college that you can learn is just how to think about complex problems and breaking them down. But even that is sort of a, you know, depending on your major and what you do and everything else, it's like when you guys, down. yeah, for, for people, you know, who are listening to this, Braden, when he first started working for supplement superstores, so he came in, started working for supplement superstores, was going to open a franchise, um, but he worked in the corporate stores for a long time. And uh, he came there with a, um, he had just got out of Mizzou law. Yeah. Right. And as a guy who was, you know, managing our Edwardsville store, I got this guy in that was working for us that was just out of Mizzou law. And I was like, what are you doing here, dude? You know, like, shouldn't you be about to be a lawyer? And you're like, I don't want to do that. You got influenced <laughs> by me. That's what happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude, the funny part is I told uh, a girl's dad I was dating at the time that I was, uh, I was like 
you know, going to do the supplement thing. And he was like, ah, yeah, I just don't know. And now like every time it's the, it's the only person I ever think about. Cause it was the only like hater I ever got my whole life. Yeah, about yeah. What we were doing. And I still think about it cause he's a super nice guy, mm-hmm. but I was like, it, it's just crazy. The uh, amount of people that there's a path. Yeah. You just expect that path. And you know, it's not to say that path's wrong, but there's definitely other opportunities that if you're willing to look outside sort of the traditional, you know, Hey, I'm just going to follow this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go accounting, whatever it is. Um, you know, you can make a way in the world that, that will be, I would say more fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And I'm also a big proponent. I think everyone needs to have passion in their life and passion being like, I talk to my wife about this all the time. We talk about this kind of stuff, but it's like, find something you like to do at work, outside of work, you know, something that can be yours. Cause there's so many people that just go through life. Right. And it's like, let's things just get dictated to them if you will. Yeah. They have a job they don't love, but fine. Okay. But then, you know, they go home and they like Netflix and all that. That's cool. But there's nothing that's like pushing them forward. They're not like, Oh, I'm going to this rock climbing gym and I'm pushing myself or I'm really pumped about crochet. I'm going to be the best crochet. Like there's nothing that there's growing. Get uncomfortable ever. Yeah. 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 I mean, life is progression, you know, otherwise like, you know, what is it actually defined by? It has to be progression of some kind, you know? Um, otherwise you just live a pretty, pretty wildly unmeaningful existence, which yeah. I don't think anyone wants to do. No, being stagnant and going through those stagnant periods. Cause everyone kind of goes through that or like the most miserable, you know, points in your life. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what it is. Like, I think that, you know, people, you know, they get paralysis a lot of times and, you know, I just think you just need to start doing something and then just, you know, the evidence, you know, from doing it a lot of times will tell you if you're doing something right or wrong, then you just deviate if you need to adjust because it's telling you to do something else or you keep doing more of the same stuff. Mm-hmm. You're never, you know? you're never losing. You're, you're just learning, right? Pretty much. Right. Yeah. You guys, um, I want to, I want to spin this back a little bit more towards Kitsch because you guys had this progression, like we're talking about doing, going through these discomforts and going from a business that was proven, um, and being able to see it grow, et cetera, and then be able to start your start up something completely, you know, out of your own, out of your own minds in the, in the form of kitsch. When you guys decided to choose like certain things, like, um, you know, what color are we going to make this logo? We're, you know, and this is the big one. You guys had a groundswell of community that valued your guys' opinion when it came to how to get in shape in Columbia and mid Illinois, but you guys chose Kansas city for the kitsch market for its first market. Why, why was that? I think it, it just really had to do with the um, the size here is a little bigger. So it was a little bit easier, I think, the talent pool. Because we knew, we, you know, Phil and I aren't chefs, right? Mm-hmm. And we have a wonderful executive chef right now um, and a great team. But for us, you know, being here locally, one, we love Kansas City. Um, and two, you know, this is where we live right now or where I live. Phil's in St. Louis. But, um, but at the time. But I'm, I'm from Kansas City. Everybody yeah. knows that. And we just, we like the idea of starting it here, really building it. And if it became something, you know, it's already in a relatively large city. It's proven. You can really expand it. Um, and for us, it just kind of worked. Um, and honestly, the uh, the growth of it and a lot of the people we've picked up along the way, and frankly, like, you know, just people from S2 and stuff that have supported us, supported us um, it's gone really well. We've just had to learn a lot of lessons. But I think us being passionate about the quality of the food and being obsessive about the stuff we're putting out has really helped us see through some of those challenging times. Um, Because it's really easy. You guys know this, but it's really easy when, you know, something goes wrong. The first thing people want to do when they own a business is cut quality. Right. It's like, hey, man, we this was a bad month. Like, let's not buy the good ketchup anymore. Mm -hmm. We can save money here, here, here. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. It's like, do you have an expense problem? Do you have a revenue problem? Because there's a big difference between how you attack either one. Yeah, and you mm-hmm. can't, if you want to have a premium brand in the sense of like having it be a higher quality option, you know, we always viewed it as like we have to put out the best food no matter what. And then we'll figure out all the rest of it. Yeah. You guys are in a spot where also, you know, I want to say this because entrepreneurs, we talk about this, you know, you, you hear this, you read this, if you are following the, that space is that delayed gratification or impulse control is one of the, the highest character traits for successful entrepreneurs. And so I got to give you guys a lot of props and a lot of respect that I feel like it could have been a very easy short sighted decision to say, Hey, we're going to open up this across the street from one of our stores in Columbia, you know, but you guys chose Kansas city. And I just, I mean, ton of admiration for that because of what you just said, it's thinking big picture, thinking long term, and how many people can we help, you know, versus uh, how how many mouths can we feed? How many people can we actually help change as far as their daily good habits by opening it in Kansas city versus Columbia or, you know, any of their markets that you guys had already penetrated. Well, dude, something that was really frustrating to me is, so my dad passed away. He had a stroke years ago, then was in assisted living for a long time. Um, but it was basically because, you know, without putting it too, you know, 
finally, he was, he was fat, you know, and he had a lot of health problems related to his weight, but he was from that old school generation that didn't eat well. And I would see him buy like healthy choice meals, right? And he would eat them for four days and he'd get sick of them because the quality just wasn't great. They didn't taste good. He was a foodie. And when we started Kitsch, one of the big driving factors for me was like, we have to make this to where, and we already talked about it, but you have to have it attractive to somebody that eating healthy is a plus, but they won't make all their decisions on it. And you can truly save lives if you do that because people will choose to do the better thing because it doesn't feel like a sacrifice. And the second it feels like a sacrifice, now you're dealing with motivation problems. Now you're dealing with the same people that struggle with their weight consistently because they just prefer this over that. And there's all sorts of things wrapped up in that. I mean, we've spent years helping people lose weight in the stores just like you guys have. But for us, foundationally, the quality of the food, the taste of the food, it is directly tied into the results we can get people. Because the second it becomes bland and they don't like it and it's just health food is the second that we lose all ability to change lives. And there's plenty of people that have come in and said, hey, man, I've been doing your meals for, you know, whatever, six months. I'm down 50 pounds. And all I do is I eat these for lunch. You know, occasionally I had them for dinner instead of going out to someplace crappy. And that's that's all I've changed. And I walk sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. What's I think the, one of the biggest uh, things, too, is... We are the number one and the number two customers of the brand. Yeah. I'm not, you know, and that was one of the reasons why I think it's, it was grounded in the right intent. Like I, um, I don't know. I think I eat 55 meals a week or something like that. that that's not an exaggeration. No, like I, I that's all I Do eat. Do you tell them to cut it down? Like, Hey man, you're well, when I first met Phil, it <laughs> yeah. was 55 meals of like hamburger helper and rice. That's not a joke. Yeah. And yeah. so he's just, he's pivoted to something that will let him live past 50. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's important. Like you have, and it gets, it goes back to like, why are you doing this in the first place? And you know, it served literally the number one need that I had around like just eating. Yep. I don't like cooking food. I just, I never have. It's not a thing that I really enjoy. Um, and I look in food in terms of utility, you know, and it, and for us, like flavor and nutrition over everything. And if there's a utility component to it, well, it has to, it has to be good, but it also has to serve your body correctly, you know, and that's where the nutrition part comes in. And I feel like I, it's an obligation of ours to be the number one and number two customers. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've had Kyle's number three. I've, I've had quite a few, uh, different, you know, prepared meal companies that I've yeah. used in the past. And, uh, as a testament to you guys as food, yours is the only one that when I bring home meals that my wife will have eaten half of them. And I'll be like, where did this go? Where'd the, yeah. where the, you know, Mac and cheese go. And she's like, Oh, I had that for lunch. Prior to to me buying Kitsch, never that would never happen. Previous episodes, Kyle has talked a lot of shit on mac and cheese, and so I just want to bring it up right now that he was buying it. Burnt, but this one is barbecue mac and cheese. Oh yeah, Bur burn in. Is it burn ins or is it? No, it's no, like, it's, it's like a pulled pork. Pulled pork, yeah. Pulled pork mac but but here's a perfect example of that. So our chef uh, David, he's great. He uh, he actually redid our mac and cheese sauce. We had a different one when we first started. And the sauce he uses now has a, uh, I think it's like a yeast component that gives it like more of a cheddar flavor, but it is um, much lower on fat. So like the actual fat on a mac and cheese dish, he's got it up here, 17 grams. So if you're somebody that's actually trying to track macros, you're trying to keep, you know, sort of that classic, call it 40, 45 grams of protein and carbs, and then under probably 20 grams of fat, which I think is a pretty, pretty standard split for sort of a good meal for someone that isn't, um, you know, eating 4,000 calories a day. Like mm -hmm. this works really well. It tastes amazing, but it was a ten grams of fiber too, man. That's yeah. Crazy. And the way that we sort yeah. of Chick structure the the menu, um, this is honestly a little bit one of the more like indulgent, yeah. you know, meals. You know, um, and we still it fits into the, the way we sort of define like you know the right macronutrients for each meal. It still fits into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You had a uh, you know this this gun to your head. You can get one kitsch meal. What would it be? I go bang bang shrimp. Mm, man, that's why we're business partners. That one's just money in the bank. <laughs> yep. Dude, I mean, I I've asked you guys, hold on. I've asked you guys this like four or five times and it's always a different meal, which is another testament to you guys keep putting out good, good meals. Well, here's yeah. the thing that we rotate so much, yeah. like the burger bowl is not even on the menu, but it will be back in a couple of weeks. I like the like, burger bowl. Yeah. It's really yeah. Burger bowl is uh, amazing. How many uh, different meals at a time? Uh, about, listeners? about 30. So I think we carry anywhere from 28 to 30, just depending on the mix time of the year, that sort of thing. And how many, how many of those are breakfasts? Uh, three to four. Yeah, so it's a really a heavy rotation of those lunch and dinner options. And the reality yeah. is, most people and that's they what kinda, our customers have told yeah, us. You sure. know, that's why we've chosen. To I do like it your that way. your breakfast meals. What's the uh, the breakfast uh, the omelet that you guys have? I do the breakfast enchiladas, man. That, yeah, yeah, we had the enchiladas. enchiladas. We had the Denver omelet. The new breakfast yeah. bowl is unbelievable. I get good. the breakfast and I eat them for lunch a lot. Yeah, and I think you know 
easiness of, of eating. I think that's a huge component of a lot of those things too. Mm-hmm. The, the bowls are really easy to eat because it's just a mash of, you know, um, good ingredients. And I think for me, like it's a repeatable action, you know, like, you know, if, if Kim eats meals, you know, like she obviously likes the meals enough to like consistently keep doing it. I think that's the big like marker for us. Like can someone do it for a long period of time, not three months? Yeah. I mean, you know, it, I, I used to eat, eat fit go, which I don't think they're, are they in business anymore here? In Shout Kansas out to eat fit go. They had great, uh, salmon Alfredo. Yeah. Yeah. I, they did have, they had a couple that were really, they had really breakfast good. tacos at it. But that here's the thing good, yeah. is back to what you were saying, as far as longevity goes, they were using the same seasoning on like everything. And eventually if you ate it for like three months straight, you eventually got to the point where you were like, I cannot. Which I, I, I can, my, and, and also I eat, you know, basically the same things every day. So for me yeah. to get tired of it, I know that there was people out there that don't work out that aren't in the fitness space that were like tired of it in a week. Dude, the funny yeah. part is, so I tore my ACL and meniscus in jujitsu in 2017. That's not funny, dude. It's no, actually not. not at all, but <laughs> it, it sucked, but I, I, I ordered a month of their meals. Um, and it was yeah. the same thing. We were living in Columbia at the time. Yeah. 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 There, there's a picture of it. Um, but yeah, that was, that was actually one of the foundational things we talked about when we first started Kitsch was like, hey, there has to be enough differentiation here that over time you can, you know, you could be with us for three years on a membership because we offer memberships and, uh, you know, you're okay with that because the meals change, the options yeah. change. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the seasoning isn't just. Whatever. You can eat, you can eat a different meal from you guys, you know, every different, you know, day of the week and you don't know that they're your meals, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah. they all don't, you know, they three don't. Three times t- a day you could do that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I think, honestly, I think this maybe applies to every business, maybe all of them. I don't know. But I think you have to marry two things. I think you have to marry predictability because everyone wants predictability of some kind. It has to be a repeatable thing, you know, whether it's a behavior or a character trait or if it's a meal. It also has, has to have variety. So you have to marry those two things. Mm-hmm. You know, you want a little bit of, you know, you want a little bit of spontaneity. You want a little difference, but you also want it to be the same, you know, so you have to just successfully kind of balance the two at all times. Mm-hmm. You get the you yeah, know, I like chocolate go, and vanilla, but you got to have the rotating flavor. I like to go in there yeah. and, and peek what the new new stuff is, it's like a little Christmas surprise. I'm like, oh, what yeah. is this? But I do and think. And then your people who work in there hype it up and I'm like, all right, I'll try it. Yeah. And one of the things <laughs> that, you know, we were frustrated with is that there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of meal companies now, right? You know, there's tons, mm-hmm. you know, you can name tons of off the internet. You can, um, you can name tons that had just had retail locations, but I think a lot of them almost just try too hard. Like just get good at like the core 10 things are like, yeah, people love burgers. All like, right. Make a great burger bowl and just like keep doing that, you know, cause it's a repeatable thing, but they just get to, they try to like, you know, massage everything and make it they almost try too hard where it's like, can you just make things that are awesome all the time and just like give people that every single time? And that's really, I think the end of the day what people want. What food's been the hardest for you guys to execute? Salads. Yeah. I tried I that imagine. for a while and it's honestly just a shelf life thing. Yeah. And like yeah. kind of packaging them, make sure they look okay. Salad and, and gets kind of slimy. You it does. Like that. It's just, yeah, it's just a different experience. So we ended up kind of punting most of that. Yeah. The other thing that's crazy is like, as a example of like learning the business, cause we were talking about that is we had a phenomenal phenomenal rib meal but yet eat it with your hands and people would yeah. buy it once they never buy it again and it goes and back they, to the convenience thing you know yeah. it has to be the ease ability i mean ease has to be good yeah and it was it was amazing a, it wasn't like a mick rib in quotes right? no it, no, was, it legit, was good it was I, i've had or it. like you can fork a knife and mick rib is all i'm getting at i mean you could but the problem was if you were trying to eat that on the go or like you know you're a real estate agent you stop a quick trip heat it up eat it in your car like that's not going to happen right and again it goes back same thing it's repeatable action like yeah. it's not repeatable even if it's phenomenal it's not going to work mm-hmm. you know? so it's like th- those are the little things about a new business though where it's like, oh, okay, that's just something we think yeah. about now. Like yeah. You actually have to eat this on the go. They're telling you. you, yeah. you yeah, and we made a big investment early on, which was, uh, you know, the, the expense on this is actually pretty astronomical when it comes to just kitchen startup. And, you know, we have what's called modified atmosphere packaging, which a lot of companies do it. It's not like a new novel thing, but, you know, it, it really prolongs the shelf life of all the meals. You know, the meals on average are 14 days. You know, the fish meals are Closer to seven. Yeah, that's more um, like a just a regulation with fish. Regardless, instead of having just a, a plastic topic, we have modified atmosphere packaging and it allows us to have, you know, maintain the freshness and the, you know, quality of the meal for a long period of time. You know, so it, it can either sit with us a little bit longer or it can sit in your fridge for longer and you can still enjoy it the same. Mm-hmm. That's, that sounds fancy, but basically what you do is you pull all the oxygen out and you place it with inert gases that won't allow bacteria to grow. So, you know, you get a longer shelf. And honestly, it can be even beyond the shelf, but you know, you, you don't want to say that, right? You want it as fresh as possible, but totally. at two weeks, it's still phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And it was a huge investment up front, but we wanted to be, you know, that's what the big players do. When you look at somebody who's, you know, making food, shipping it all over the country, 
you know, we said, hey, we, we want to be local. We want to do an amazing job locally. We have our own delivery drivers that drive around locally to drop stuff for members. You know, we, that's all the local um, small business touch. But we wanted to have an experience and, you know, the shelf and all that that you would get if you went with one of those big companies that's, you know, making meals in New York and then shipping it to you, you know. And that's what I'm getting box. at. We've, we've just seen so many of these, right? So I'm going to name off some that are nation, nationwide. And the ones that have been really punching me in the face in my ads as far as on my own Instagram lately. But uh, Factor Meals would be one. Yeah. I would say that's like really, really, really pimping hard. Yep. Um, they do a good job. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. disagree. I'm sure they do, right? But I'm sure that they're... Rob Bailey sponsored by them, right? Is, I mean, yeah. dude, there's a number, I'm sure, man. You get them on the kitchen team. They're throwing, yeah, they're, I mean, they're throwing all kinds of people at, on, on this brand. Um, we've got Just Meats that has been getting yeah. bigger and they've been sponsoring more people that we know. Um, where they just send you the bulk, po- bulk proteins, right? But, but here's the difference, and I think this is important, is is our brand, don't get me wrong, we have bodybuilders, we have people that use these that are very fitness focused. But just meats, like your grandma, is she really going to buy a brisket? And then just, you know, yeah, she gets yeah, yeah, 14 yeah. pounds of meat every week, yeah. and then she like kind of puts it all together. Be a cool grandma. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can leave that up there. Yeah. You know, so we're looking, we're looking more for, you know, the person that looks for the whole meal, they're busy, um, you know, usually they're a pretty successful person, they don't have a lot of time. And they're willing to pay for the complete thing. Right. It's not to say that the, the parceled out stuff is wrong. There's definitely a huge market for that. But why these like, so you got like mega fit meals and you've got factor meals and these are all, these are all coming frozen, correct? Versus all your guys' food's completely fresh, never frozen. Some are well, frozen, some are just cold. But one of the reasons we chose to do the, the, the local thing is, is one of our frustrations was like, you would have some of these where you'd order them from out of state and the food quality was actually great if the shipping was good. So oh, if yeah. like UPS handled it right and it wasn't on your porch, huge for third long. party issue there, dude. And I mean, that, that's why a lot of those died. Like freshly, I think pretty much died because of shipping costs. Yeah. yeah when that I mean, happened I mean, after COVID. It was wild how I had friends who, you know, were sponsored by nationwide shippers and they were like, we just can't ship anymore, dude. Yeah. It's, it's $50 to ship this to you. And it's like, you be- I mean, just wild to think about how people's operations scaled and they, they, they just turned into these massive businesses and something like that can just completely make your business unfeasible. Overnight. Yeah, I mean, you have to do it the very best you can to understand, like, what are the constraints of this business now and into the future, you know? And one of the non-negotiables from us from the very beginning was, okay, flavor, nutrition over everything. Well, how do you mean, well, and also quality, too, which is wrapped up in that. But right, right. how do you maintain quality, you know, every day and then into the future too long term? And I don't believe that you can maintain quality by shipping food all over the country. No. At least the way that, at least what our standard of quality is. Right. You know, so one of the things, you know, from the very beginning was like, we will not ship. We do deliver, but we deliver, deliver lo- locally. Literally, you know, our cold in, truck in shows refrigerated up trucks, house. not yeah. freezer trucks. Yeah, so, no, no, refrigerated trucks. Right. The transit time is you know a couple hours, right? Um, but you know all that to say, like that was the one that was the one thing. So we will never do anything outside of Kansas City for that reason, you know, unless we feel like we can do really well and open up another kitchen, et cetera. Yeah, but I don't think that'll ever be the case because one of the other things that I just I just don't believe in. It's just it's just one of the again one of the non negotiables we had. Um, the packing is. It's, it's an expense to us, but it's also just wasteful, and the consumer doesn't like it either. You have to throw away the box. You have to throw away all the stuff, you know, all the cold packs, all those things. You just feel wasteful, and, like, there's no really reasonable way to kind of get rid of every week. So we're like, why don't we just remove that component, mm-hmm. you know? so You guys mentioned Freshly, right, which is yeah. uh, this is not a prepared meal. This is actually yeah. they send you all the ingredients, right? No, no, so that's, that's prepared meals. Fresh. Hello yeah. Fresh. So I'm Freshly, I'm sorry. Freshly was a um, – and I used Freshly for a long time before we started to kitsch. Um, I was – one of their best customers too, for sure. <laughs> Some good R and D um, there. Yeah, but yeah, they uh, they had good meals and stuff, and they had really good repeatable. Like they had like a chicken mash. It was kind of like a Thanksgiving meal. Phenomenal, you know. Um, but yeah, they couldn't sustain the. Co- well, at least we don't know. But you know, it seems as though from the outside looking in, they couldn't sustain the cost. You know, shipping, so they they had to collapse the brand. Well, dude, and just think about it this way too. It, it, let's say it cost you twenty bucks to ship ten meals. That means every meal as the producer, you're spending two dollars just on shipping which means to make whatever margin it is, just to make the business make sense, you know, where you can make a little bit of money, you've got to reduce something else or raise the price. Yeah. And usually what happens is the price gets raised slightly and then the cogs cost a good sold. So the quality of the food gets dropped slightly. So our thought was, okay, we can take basically a lot of that money that they were spending on shipping and just dump it into the quality of the food. So instead of having like a really crappy cut of steak, it's like, hey, we're going to use something that's a little higher up. You know, hey, instead of using, you know, the salmon that's sort of like the lowest quality salmon you can get from your supplier, it's like, let's get kind of that that next grade up or that higher level where it's like, hey, this is like what I would buy at, you know, if I went to hy V and I was like going to cook for some friends at my house, right. let's use that type of, you know, quality. And I think 
so many people get wrapped up in um, really unique, like small niche questions about nutrition. And they forget about these like big wholesale questions of just, Hey, am I, am I using generally good quality foods? Am I trying generally to, you know, not waste a bunch of calories on pointless oils and, you know, silly stuff like that. And am I, am I making good choices generally in terms of like, Hey, if I can do something that's whole grain versus not, maybe that's a little bit better. Or if I have blood sugar issues, maybe I'm going to do something that has a little bit more fiber and just making those big choices that it's going to, you know, make the large changes in their life. Yeah. I mean, coming from our background, it's very easy Mm -hmm. to look at things and be like, just look at the macros right away. Yeah. Right. Because that's, that's what, you know, gym people do. That's what, if you're in the fitness space, you do when you, when you're looking at stuff and you forget that, you know, the, the, the broad, you know, most people in America don't even understand what macros are. Right. And what most people in America are doing, they're they're going to Chick-fil-A, you know, during their lunch break and they're eating something that's 1300 calories and they don't even realize, how. you know, they have no clue how many calories they're eating. So if you can get that person, you know, to switch out to something that's a non-processed foods and that, you know, is, um, you know, half the calories, then that's a win you know, and then they can stack it on top. And I think that just goes back to what you were saying as far as the food quality, you got to have something that's, that's delicious that they want to eat over and over again. Dude, we were talking before the podcast Mm -hmm. about Peter, uh, Peter Atia's book. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of the stuff he talks about, it's not these like super niche things. I mean, there's some stuff in there that's pretty niche, but I mean, a lot of it's just doing the big stuff, right? Yeah. And like, that's what, can you exercise consistently, you know? No, in that book, he says it literally, if you walk, I think Mm-hmm. you've read it. Yeah. I think it's like, if you walk for like 10 minutes a day or something like that, then yeah. you, you're increasing your lifespan by like 10 years. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's something just it's like nuts. very yeah. small. You reduce your risk of cardiovascular yeah. disease by X percent. It's crazy yeah. when you look into like the data on that. I, and I can't remember if it's that book where they're talking about whether or not you can step down a stair as like yeah, a, a huge indicator. Yeah. Yep. Because basically like people always fall and mm-hmm. what happens is they trip, right? Your grandma trips and it's not the trip that gets her. It's that she doesn't have the strength with a bent knee you know, in front of her to actually push back up like a, somebody that was 25 would. Yeah. Well, she doesn't have the muscle mass. No, mm-hmm. but the muscle mass is the key, which uh, for me ties right back to the meals. Cause you know, one of the biggest things that people don't do is they don't consume enough protein. No deficient um, in protein. That is, a, that is number, the number one thing. Like if you were to say, all right, I can screw everything else up. You can't screw that up. You what's know? this is kind of off topic, but um, what's you guys' thoughts on? It feels like there's been a big push to say, uh, you know, through the media that that you don't need to consume as much protein. Have you guys been seeing that? I mean, a little bit. So I worked with a guy that did my nutrition a long time ago, and it was interesting because I had, I had this discussion with him because he didn't recommend like the you know the astronomical protein levels. Mm-hmm. But his point was essentially when you're losing weight higher protein is going to, you know, protect muscle. We always knew that if you're in a calorie surplus or you're training super hard, you may be proportionately um, able to have a little bit less um, just simply because you're not putting the strain on your body in the sense of like having that deficit as well. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, it's like, it's still going to be better to consume more because of the, the thermogenic effect yeah. of it, because of the Satiation. muscle sparing. Dude, yeah. everything. Yeah. I, I, that's what I, you know, it, it's so confusing when you read those, those articles, because it's like, I, I don't know what the, what the angle that, you know, they're trying to get at, you know, to cons- make people consume. Yeah. I'm sure it's less meat, you know, obviously there's the, the component of meat, you know, is bad for the environment or whatnot. But, you know, when you think about if you're going to fill somebody's calories with a macronutrient, there is no better macronutrient than, you know, protein. I also well, think you car- look at <laughs> it's the carbohydrate people trying to figure out how to sell more carbohydrates. Big carbohydrate, you know, it's big or the fats. Big, big, big carb, big, big carb. Fat. It's like yeah. the milk people, but it's the carbohydrate people. Yeah. You know, don't eat protein; doesn't help us. Is there like a big carbs. fat lobby, like for olive oils or something? I don't know. They, they've be. been they've been lacking because big sugar, you know, yeah. and yeah. then you got the carnivore people. But they, you don't have the guy that's like, I just eat peanut butter all day. You know, that was. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that was really big with the. Uh, I would say like during the paleo era yeah right? like 2015 era yep everybody was on coconut oil man coconut oil you should have been buying stock in that that was weird when it was coconut like oil people would come in the sto- store and they'd be like do you guys have coconut oil I'm do you guys have grass-fed butter for my I'm like are you coffee? Measure- are yeah. you measuring that because like it's still a fat it's still fat <laughs> yeah. you can still go into a calorie surplus eating good quote-unquote no you fats. don't understand it's mcts dude people exactly right people were that, smearing you remember. people were smearing oh, coconut oil on quest bars as like a meal Oh yeah! Oh really? Oh absolutely! I mean, watching them do it, and maybe I had a bite. Maybe it, it was, was awesome. it was hot. <laughs> it probably was awesome. Maybe, maybe on average, maybe, that's pretty maybe, good. Maybe did it was you great. say on a Quest bar? 
Yeah, on a chocolate chip cookie dough. Yeah, there's bar. never been a good bite of that. Never oh, been a good bite know, of a but quest the cookie bar. dough one though. Mm. The you cookie dough. Throw one? it in the microwave. Warmed up with yeah. some coconut oil on the top. Yeah. It's okay. Kyle, it's not a trioplex cookie. Don't think that. Not Cer- a trioplex cookie. Certainly not a Chef J yeah. trioplex cookie. It's certainly not. A Let's look at the chef bar. himself. Can we get a Google image of a uh, Chef J, please? <laughs> chef J trioplex cookie. This man made the best tasting damn protein cookies known to man. Do they still exist? I mean, I, made I a, think so. I made a thousand of these cookies. They were th- really good before the age of twenty-five. Yeah, <laughs> he did them all when he was. Look I at mean, Chef. Look at, this fella. look at Chef J. You're not going to take nutritional advice from Chef J. <laughs> like, do, do you think on. he's on TRT? His mo- the moisture Bro. of these cookies in the back because dude, that was the biggest. You don't want to see him cookies. underneath that apron, look dude. He's freaking sheet. shredded. Between mm-hmm. his oatmeal uh, oatmeal cookies, they had to have that piece of paper between them because they were they would stick together. They were so good. Yeah, speaking of cookies, we have cookies. Well, that's coming. No, no we, we have them on the menu oh, now. I'm glad you brought them. Where you, are they at? Yeah. You, you have the uh, protein bites, too. Those Cheesecake got, bites, yeah, we have bites. Yeah, I brought some of our chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. What? Yeah, we can do like a little uh, little cookie off later. Maybe. Live review? Let's go. Yeah, we can do, we can do a little review. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is Instead of the Costco cookie, we'll just slot in. I'm the, really excited about that. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're in the bag in the other room. Jeff yeah. is Costco, $2.50. Yeah, chocolate chip cookies. Oh, dude. Yeah. Let's go. So Yeah, so it's just a spin on, you know, it's... Uh, on a normal cookie, you know, just making a little healthier and, and a little more macro friendly. Our, our view on dessert, though, is like dessert should be dessert. So these yeah. people that are like trying to make dessert, not dessert, like it's not the absolute best thing for you. But the real question is, can you make dessert, whatever, 150 calories, not 1500 mm-hmm. and still have it be good? It's not. Can you make it 10 calories? Yeah, it's an eat this, not that. It's not. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's make it glorified air. Like I don't want to eat air. Right. You know? Damage control. <laughs> Damage control. On oh, that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, you guys- I've learned that doing protein reviews that most of the time, if something looks too good to be true on the uh, nutritional label, you're like, oh, of course, that's that's the reason that just like a that. letdown, dude. It's always Straight a letdown, up, almost every or, time. Or it's I don't st- know if we've know, had a protein cookie yet that had decent macros that we enjoyed. Not one. No. Oh no, but if there's some that have terrible macros that are like, oh, this is just a this cookie. Is it's just good. A cookie. <laughs> or it's got some like weird fiber that's not no. Oh, no. Yeah. There's, there's, there's 130 there. grams there. of some fiber. This one, dude. You are gonna this shit your one. pants eating this cookie. The Toto cookie. The Toto cookie. I mean, this is vegan atrocious, cookie, isn't it? sea salt chocolate chip. This thing was ridiculously good. Oh, it was okay. really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's look at those macros, Luke. It's gotta it's be one of the It's probably just a cookie. Look down there. Tout this is a vegan cookie. There you go. 340 calories, 42 Yeah, that's cars, just, a, that's, okay, so that's, that's just a cookie. And I mean, one, hey, serving size, ah, cookie. No, I mean, but that's the, okay, that's the problem with vegans, though. Crumble is, cookie, probably right hey, up there with the same hey, calories. Don't, no, 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 I, listen, I don't mind, I don't mind, I don't mind vegans. I don't have hate towards vegans. What I will say is there's two types of vegans. The vegan marketing is, mm. No, there's one vegan who's like, I eat, you know, this combination of beans and this and that, and I get my aminos. Yeah, and this chickpeas how, and all that. Yeah, and yeah. they are, they are locked in. They're probably healthier than all four of us, mm-hmm. and they get it. Except for and then Kyle. there's yeah and yeah not Kyle, and then there's the ones that are like oh I'm vegan You're like well what'd you have for dinner I'm like well I had sweet potato chips and it's like that yeah you, that's it you're vegan well and sorta. skittles yeah yeah which yeah but also they're, vegan yeah 100 <laughs> percent yeah it's cane sugar though they're like you know feeding their cat vegan food and it's just dying in the corner right yeah I mean we're obviously in January too so people are focused on resolutions and stuff and all that but you know you just like back to kind of the point we were talking earlier maybe I don't know if if Kyle said it or you did but people have to focus on the big rocks, man. Like you got to focus on the stuff that like gives you the most output for the input you put in, you know, yeah. you can't complicate things. And I don't know that message is said all the time, but like that just is, these bad. are the markers on health, right? Phil. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, eat more protein, probably, you know, consume more water, have electrolytes, like do those things right. You know, if you eat more protein, you know, as a result of that, you'll eat less carbohydrates and fat because protein's more filling. It's more satiating. Let's talk about a little bit more of the meal prep situation up in Kansas City because we've been around. Kyle and I've lived here over seven years now. Yeah, we've seen yeah. several brands, you know, good friends that have come and gone, people that have you know scaled their business and been able to open up multiple locations, but then not you know have staying power. You know, you talked about some of these these um, almost what you were just talking about, Phil, with you know these health markers. It's the same thing when it comes to the food, having really really high quality classics that people know and love like the burger bowl, right? Like a chicken and rice meal. Mm-hmm. But what are these other brands doing? And I know I'm not, I'm not here to ask you to talk down about competition here. I'm simply saying, I want you to talk shit on them. What was the first, like, what is the stuff that you guys are noticing that it was like, dude, Kansas city's in need of, of this, you know, now, here, here's the reality. <laughs> this sounds kind of bad, but we don't really pay attention to anybody else. 
And our view has always been if we make the best stuff, whether it's at S2 with the service experience and the, the supplements we have or whether it's at Kitsch with the food quality and the service and everything we do, no one else will be able to touch us. So it's not a matter of going and saying, hey, is our chicken breast better than this? Because, you know, he's got two shops here, there, whatever. Our view has always been, can we make the best chicken breast that you could possibly have in a pre-made meal? And if the answer is yes, then we will always win. And so that's been the philosophy from day one. And so I don't want to avoid the question, but the reality is I haven't even set foot in any of the local com- competition sure. for, I well, mean, literally since we started because I was like, well, we, this is our stuff now. I like, think that I begs the question, then what measures you guys take then to ensure that you're staying on top of the quality and what's possible? What kind of innovation have you guys seen in this uh, space, you know what I mean, since your inception? The main thing is that we just eat the meals every single week. And the second that one is off, we pull every meal from the line. Sure. Yeah. And we're super close to the customers. And we make sure that, you know, we have the right information. Yeah. You know, because if you don't know what to do, the first step is to do is like, why don't you just go to the front lines and figure out what's going on? Yeah. You know, just don't overcomplicate like, you know, the answer to the question. Dude, the hardest part about food, though, is anything you take off the menu, someone loved. Yeah, you know, always, true. you could have sold three of them in a you know a five week period. And, like, and the hey, rib is back. Yeah, yeah, you're like, hey, this literally <laughs> just didn't sell. No one liked it. And then yeah. you get that one guy who calls and he's like, man, I I was eating those every day. And you're like, well, you were literally the only one. Mm-hmm. But yeah. there's always an opinion on food, which is so different than something else because you know, it, it, in supplements are sort of a magic, right? You you educate, you let people try stuff they've never you know experienced it. Food, if you're like, hey man, you should buy this Thai dish. You know, it's great. And the guy goes, I just don't like Thai. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of, that's yeah. kind of game over. You're like, okay, we're just going to pivot. You're like try the burger bowl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to, I don't know, in my opinion, at least the way that we look at it and define it, I guess you have to stay away from like polarizing, you know, categories of food, you know, cause it doesn't help, you know, if it's, if it's 5% of your people that really like it, well, that doesn't make sense on the business side. It also just doesn't serve the cu- customer the way that, you know, on average, like, you know, they, they want to be served. But I'll, I'll you know? tell you guys, you do a really good job of incorporating a, a large variety of things that I wouldn't expect to see in a pre, pre, pre prepared meal. Like you guys got the Cuban um, bowl, which yep. is freaking good. I love Cuban sandwiches yeah. and it's like, yep. you wouldn't um, it's kind normally of novelty, think, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you guys got the, uh, you know, the Greek, um, the Greek, uh, Greek steak. The, yep. Greek yeah, steak yep. that you guys have, which has tzatziki sauce, which I love. And uh, you know, just, different things that uh, you know yeah, chimichurri sauce i think yeah but, but little, to your i mean yeah. to earlier it's like you know little predictability little little variety yeah you need a little bit of both i'm also probably the guy that likes novelty more than the average person you yeah. know is there no, any kind of thing i you think guys, a lot of people like novelty though yeah uh, i think it's what keeps you coming back you get your staples but yeah. you're always going to want to try something need. new yeah are you guys looking at as far as like this is there any kind of innovation that you had tried that you were like we 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 tested it it just didn't didn't hold up well we talked about salads a little bit earlier, but I was thinking just in terms I, of like, maybe you were like swinging for the fences on something. I don't know. I think for us, it was just trying to get too try to be too much to too many people. You know, like we were, we were sort of joking around about vegans. I actually think it can be a great diet if done well, but we don't have a lot of vegan options and that's yeah. not because we don't like them, but it's because to have a full menu that would actually have a vegan um, be able to eat for, you know, the month, right. We'd have to dedicate two thirds of our menu to that. Yeah, you can't have three three options and, you know, I think that's going to be successful. Yeah, so most of yeah. our meals are going to have, you know, a protein source that's meat-based and then it's going to have some sort of veggie or some sort of carb or whatever, but we're very true to who we are. We're serving the person that is probably going to eat meat most of the time. Um, you know, we have a lot of gluten-free, a lot of dairy-free, a lot of low-fat. We have keto. Like, we have all of those. Yeah, I was going to say you guys ones. got a good keto. Yeah. You know, I buy, I, I buy you guys' keto uh, meals quite often and they're just as good as any other meal yep. that you guys make. But at some point, you just have to, especially as a small business, you know, you just have to really stand for what you stand for. And if you're not a perfect fit, we try to be really honest because I've had people call and say, hey, like, you know, I need this. You know, I need, you know, a vegan meal for, you know, my mother. She only is a vegan. It's like, hey, you know, try this other company. They're online. They're only vegan. Mm -hmm. But if somebody calls and say, hey, I want, you know, the best quality pre-made meals and, you know, I'm trying to get more protein and this and that. It's like, hey, that is exactly what we do. This is the absolute best option for that. I've got 30 options you can try. You know, and, and that's where we where we've really realized don't try to complicate your operations. Just try to be amazing at what you do. Mm-hmm. And same with restaurants, right? Like you go to some, some restaurants and the menu's got like Rock Hill Grill downtown. We love it. Yeah. Menu's super simple, but everything on it's great. It's way better than some of these places where it's like they've got the, the gourmet hot dog. The and cheesecake factory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, a book actually, where you're just there's, like, there's we, ads make, in it. we there's make literally anything menu. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. And that can work. But I don't, in my mind, like, I just don't, I don't know. I, I think it's an identity crisis. I, well, you got I Raising like Cane's. It. it makes one thing. Yeah. And Chick-fil-A, right? Same, I mean, one thing. thing. Raising yeah. Cane's doesn't even have ranch dressing. They have just cane sauce and ketchup. I'm not That's a big good. ranch guy. And by most Get measures, out of Missouri. I don't like ranch. I don't like you white. like blue cheese, don't you? You're a big blue cheese. I don't guy like white them. sauces. They they're oh, just not my thing. And liquid, uh, dude. And liquid's uh, not true. Yeah. And liquid cheese. I, I really don't. Liquid cheese creeps me out. Oh uh, yeah, you you took that one wrong. You don't like cheese whiz. You're not a big cheese. You don't like sour cream. You don't no. like ranch. You don't like tzatziki sauce. Well, to be clear, tzatziki's. Okay, but I would almost put that in its own category. Brandon is like chocolate, for Christ's sake. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, dude. Weird. Yeah, that's weird. Weird. Just yeah. go off to Mars with Elon. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, uh, but I, one thing I wanted to say real quick yeah. about uh, the competition stuff is I think inherently it's important to note that, you know, business is pretty hard, you know, especially in, in food. And that's why a lot of people have a hard time standing over a long period of time. You know, yeah. it's difficult to repeat over and over again. And food is obviously becoming incredibly challenging, you know, as the years go on. Um, so I especially think it seems like the ones that are doing that are doing a good job, right? Yeah, they figured out to so to such a high degree that it's like, how do you actually compete with a Chick Fil A? And you just can't. I don't know how you could. It's tough. Well, pre- you they, can, they, but you just can't beat them. Certainly not. No, I mean, I mean, Raising Cane's is absolutely competing well with them, right? Yeah. I wouldn't even say that they have the best chicken strips. But they do a bunch of business on Sundays, and their their whole marketing plan too is I put my shop right next to a Chick-fil-A. And then when you don't want to go to Chick-fil-A because the, line, the line's too long, yeah, you go to Raising Cane's. Yeah. So then instead of doing 9 million, they're doing 2.5 and you're still making a good EBITDA number, but it's just a, a choice that you're going to yeah. do different. It is a well thought On, model. They're, you know? they're seeing uh so in the prepared, like I will say this in the uh, like prepared, I should say more the frozen food section. Yeah. The options are just getting wild, right? You can start mm-hmm. finding like, you know, almond flour, yep. chicken strips, Cali, Cali power. If you guys have seen those chicken tenders yep. made out of cauliflower, uh, tons of options now. Right. And the air fryer is becoming more and more prevalent in everybody's kitchen. Mm-hmm. So my question to you guys is with everybody with microwave, you know, prepared meals, have you guys thought of that kind of innovation? I keep hinting at that, but I'm like, Guys, I got a huge million dollar idea for your food. I'm just saying, yeah. if we were if we were to pop open like sweet potato fries and it says like put these in the in the air fryer for eight minutes, yep. is there is there a market there you think for that for starting to use the to air fryer instead said. of the microwave? I mean, maybe, but how many people have air fryers? A lot of fitness people do, but like outside of that, I don't think they're as widespread as you would think. So it's like if you're trying to have the most effect, you're gonna want to have something like the microwave and and. Honestly, like, sure, some of our stuff can be air fried just already, just based on what it is. Sure. But we're trying to be able to help the most amount of people. Um, and for us, uh, you know, especially with, to Kyle's point, what we do do well, we know what we do well. And I want to stick to that formula and be the absolute best version of that. Totally. Versus trying to pivot and having, you know, it's not that it's a bad idea, but that's somebody else's idea, right? They do mm-hmm. just sweet potato fries and, you know, whatever. But it's not us. Whatever stuff tastes best crispy. That's yeah. Cool. And our, I mean, our containers for what it's worth, they go in the oven. Yeah. You know? Wow. So if you want to put the, you know, our containers in the oven and, you know, enjoy the meal that way, you, you can. You just got to get the sticker off. Sticker's not oven proof. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you'd hope but, you wouldn't, Mark. Yeah, you wouldn't be oven. Yeah. But, making it with the whole lid on it. I, I just don't want to be at fault for, you know. A <laughs> Burning house a house down. Yeah. So do you guys have, you know, you guys mentioned that you don't have anybody here locally that you've, you know, compare yourself against, but are there any businesses that, you know, maybe are in that space that you guys look up to or outside of the space that you guys look up to that you find inspiration in? I look up to supplement superstores. Specifically I, in Kansas City. I look up to myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and to be honest, you know, I, I, Kyle, I don't even know if you know this, but, you know, we were talking earlier about impulse control and <laughs> the number one person that I look to for like, how do I successfully develop impulse control is you. And I appreciate that a lot about you. Why? What made you say that? Because, uh, you know, since we first met you years ago, you know, I just, you were, dem- you consistently demonstrate like delayed gratification and just the ability to control, you know, your impulses. And I've just always admired that trait about you. So I just continue like, it, it's always in the back of my head of like, Kyle's really good at this. You should be good at this too. So I just keep trying to do it. Thanks, man. And you're the you're the person I look to for that. And he seemingly does it without ever talking about it ever. It's completely unspoken behavior. <laughs> yep, um, and it's very admirable. And our employees on the self and super source side, they look for you, they look to you for that too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You know, I think that has just developed over years of you know being in the store and working in the store and basically having you know 
it is Groundhog Day when you're when you're a store guy at Supplement Superstores and you get up and you have the same conversations over and over again, and um, you know it takes a long time to de- to develop and, and go the route that we did. I mean, we're not traditional entrepreneurs. We we got an opportunity provided to us through basically grinding it out for a very long time and being valuable um, in a system, and then having you know an owner and Andy Frisella who is just more generous than any other owner when it comes to to business and gave us the opportunity to franchise and so you know as soon as he laid that out as being an option I just knew that you know there's a part of my brain that I can kind of just turn off you know and not really think about things and so yeah I mean the work kind of you know created the outcome of you Mm -hmm. you know which I've always really admired and definitely so it's the same thing it's like 10 year overnight success right yeah yeah everyone's like oh dude must be good for wherever you're at and it's like man you don't you didn't see it yeah I remember when we were in Edwardsville and, you know, you were rebuilding the staff out there and every day for an hour, you fired go, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, me and Brian T. Yeah. We were rag Teach tag. the sales master. We were, we were rag tag back then. <laughs> we had a, we had a guy sit down with us yesterday and he was talking about opening a new, a you're new just business. not going to let Braden finish his uh, thought. Just did. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. It's all good. No, it's all good. What do you, what do you get to say, Joe? <laughs> no, we're just, we're just giving you shit. I, I was just saying, I remember in Edwardsville though, to Phil's point, um, one of the things that you were trying to do to kind of help build that store was go out in the community and you would tell the guys, Hey, I'm going to go an hour a day. And every day at either 12 or one, I forget which one, it was always like a set time on the schedule. He would go for an hour on the dot, be back an hour later. And he would always go and hit, you know, a couple of places, introduce himself, give a card out, whatever. And that, this is the problem a lot of people have, I think in business, you know, us included sometimes, right. Is it's really easy to be like, okay, I'm nine days in. And this has done absolutely nothing, but 900 days of that. And you're the most well-known guy in the whole city and everyone goes to your store and you know, you're you're known as the dude and, and it's just, it's hard to create that level of consistency unless you really like the journey and you're willing to, to push hard. And I think that's, that goes to what Phil's saying. I think it goes to a lot of the most successful people we say in business, see in business. It's just that ability to say like, okay, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do this for a hundred days. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I think you have to understand that, you know, when you're swinging like that, basically you're going out and you're meeting people, Yeah, <clears throat> you know, and this goes for, you know, any business. It's like, if I can meet people and I can shake hands and I can explain what we do, you know, every day that I go out, maybe I'm not going to find a customer, but I can create a good impression. Yep. And if I create a good impression about our business, there, there's a possibility that they're going to tell other people about us and it's just going to spread the, you know, word of mouth about our, our company. And that's something that an advertisement can't do. No, there's, and it there, will never be able to do. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that taking that, that thought process is, is helped a lot, helped all of us probably a lot. But that's yeah. the kind of thing, that's the hard work that most people don't do. And then they wonder why they're not successful. And it's the same thing we see sometimes with hourly employees that want to jump for, you know, a 50 cent raise or whatever. And it's not just with us too, but I, I have friends or, you know, relatives or whatever that talk about this kind of stuff. And it's like, oh, you know, I'm working at whatever Chipotle. I'm going to jump to Taco Bell for another 50 cents. I'm going to go do here. You know, this guy's not treating me. I'm going to go here. And it's like, you don't understand if if you want to be successful, the real success is excelling someplace to the point where you've done so well that they have no choice but to promote you. And then taking that, giving them all you can. And then when you've kind of outgrown that, uh, that opportunity, you say, Hey man, I've, you know, I've worked for a few, two years at Chipotle, you know, can, can I get a great reference letter? And that person's probably going to give you an amazing reference letter. And then you're going to jump to the next job and it's not going to be a 50 cent raise. It's going to be a 30 substantial. Yeah, it's going to be a $30,000 raise. And then eventually it'll be a hundred, you know, and that, that mentality I think is so lost on, I'm not going to say the younger generation, but just a lot of people. And the difference between that is really where I see success and failure in so many folks, especially when they're not called the the ultimate boss or an entrepreneur, but they just don't understand how to add value. Yeah. And they're looking at jobs as a job versus an opportunity. It seems like Yeah, you, and you were right about the, the younger generation though. It is the younger generation now currently and every younger generation forever and always like our generation was like that too. Dude. You know, I worked with hundreds of people, hundreds of people that were yeah. like, I'm going to get that opportunity. And it was just, you know, they, they, they didn't have the staying power to, to That's, understand where the value was. It's wild to think that people would, you know, they look at Andy Frisella where he's at now in his entrepreneurship, you know, career, that there's people that would just drive from all over the country and work for him for free right now and just quit whatever it is they're doing just to be able to work for him. And we had a bunch and bunch and bunch of coworkers that just like wouldn't listen to a word he was saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's because they're focused on learning rather than the earning, which, right. you know, for some period of your time, you know, of your life, you should be focused just on that. 
you should be focused. How can I get in the right environment to learn? Basically trade, you know, my time, I'll, I'll get paid for it, but I'm, I'm focused on learning. I have no regard for, for the earning, you know? So I also think people just get lost in like what the result is. The result is actually the person you're, you're creating, not, not the actual result itself. Yeah. It's, it's all the work that you are, you know, doing in the process. It's like creating the person that you are and that you will be. Acquiring you know, those skills. Nothing yeah. else matters. Well, dude, and the thing you about know? Andy, people don't realize is that the, the most impressive thing to me about him, because he's a one in a billion marketer and the way he can inspire people and all that. But it was the fact that he picked up that social media was going to be big and he started posting and he was posting when people were making fun of him for posting and before it was cool. And, you know, so he was doing that stuff every day for years before it was like, Oh, you could be a podcaster. Oh, you could be this big social media influencer. And that was really like the brilliant move he did on sort of that branding front. And there's plenty of us that knew him back then, knew other people back then, us back then. It's like, did we post every day for 10 years about what you're learning in business? Yeah. You yeah. know, but he did. And whatever, you know, flaws or things, he's, oh, this was handed. What you can't misunderstand is how much work went into that. And then, again, it's that 10-year thing where it's like people look back and like, oh, it's got to be easy to have this big podcast and, you know, have all this. And it's like, no, dude, it's you don't understand even a tenth of what went into it. Mm -hmm. And sure, now maybe you get to fly on the private jet or whatever, but that's a result of all those times where no one saw it. You know, any he's, of that. He's work. had some incredible, like to your point, Brayden, he's had like some incredible guests on his podcast over, you know, over the years. But when he first started, he was even asking uh, Kyle's wife, Kim, if she wanted to come on the podcast as a guest with her candle company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's the reality of like growth. Like all of us probably know other really successful people. And it's like 99% of them, it's not, I mean, there may be some stroke of luck, but it's just that journey of every day for 10 years yeah, yeah i showed up at my gym and then and then we finally franchised the gym yeah that's when we got 800 locations but it was the 10 years of putting the processes together and going back to all the way back to like this analogy you just gave in the sense of uh you know leaving chipotle for taco bell or this or that it's yeah. like no one's too cool it's an opportunity like yeah. you know andy didn't look at posting on facebook back when he first started because he actually was slow in the form of like starting his own personal page yeah right and when he finally did, he started posting stuff and it's like, you know, you get like six likes and he wasn't that letting them deter him at all. It wasn't no. about the likes. It was about just being consistent with the content. Yeah. It's yeah. all about the, the, the journey anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, it's yeah. just the volume thing. I mean, the volume is the one word, you know, just like doing the love. People love this quote, you know, success comes from doing the ordinary thing for an extraordinary oh. period of time, you know, and, and that's really, it's all that really needs to be said. Almost a law, you know, you know, it's like if, if you don't have the result then like, then you're just not willing to do the same thing over and over again, which is one of the. Why I said what I said, I, that's the one thing I admire the most about you because mm -hmm. you've done that for a long time. I'm like, damn. And I don't really, I'm working on that, but like, that's not inherently inside me. I've had to really work hard at, at sort of creating that, but like, it's, that's the thing. That's you got to be, that's necessary. You've gotten you, a lot better at it. Though. You got to be, mean, it's yeah, a, it's be dumber, growth. be dumber for real. Because it's like the more you can turn your brain off and just do, yeah. you, because but, most of the things that you're, you're asking yourself to do would be, you know, not high, they're not high level tasks, you know, they're just something that you, you got to turn your brain yeah. off and just keep going. How do I do yeah. this easier? How do I do this better? How do I, you know, people are always saying? trying to and look for like the that easier bright, shiny that, syndrome. I'm going to yeah. start doing that over there. I think that's more effective and so forth. And you're like, no, I'm just, yeah, just stay the course. Stay the course. People and, overvalue how smart they are though. Mm -hmm. well, like the amount of people that are so smart that they can shortcut is infinitesimal. Like it's like infinitesimally small, you know, there's like one guy. And that's the second half of that quote is like, you know, doing the ordinary thing for an extraordinary period of time without convincing yourself that you're smarter than you are. I think that's a big component of it. Like if you're Elon Musk, like you truly have a one. You are smart. Yeah. yeah. And, yes. and then you combine that with the work ethic, but it's like, you know, most of us couldn't just go code the best app in the world in 30 days of working hard. So like, yeah, our options are probably going to be a little bit more, you know, Normal. Yeah. And even that guy that can code, it's like, okay, 30 days, what can you do in five years with that yeah. level of, you know, intensity, intelligence and all that? You guys right. seen those, remember the, you know, Tony Pena, one of the self-help guys out there? Yeah. He had one of those unbelievable rants. Do you remember that one where he was like, that's why you're poor. <laughs> he no, was just going no. on and on. Well, one of the best ever. You don't talk about that. Like, oh, yeah. That's why I said just be dumb. dumber. Because he's, like, he's talking about that. He's that screaming. Quote. He's like, everybody everybody in the room was all like uh, really, really well-educated people. Yeah. They'd gone yeah. really far. And he's like, you don't need a case study. You don't need all these extra this and that. He's like, you all think you're that's your problem. You think you're all so fucking smart. He's like, that's why you're all poor. He's like, just read the script and make the call. Shut your brain off. But that's yeah. like the difference, but, though, in intelligence levels. A lot of times, like the people that got the B pluses in school, 
you know, are the ones that are managing the guy that was an A plus student because the risk tolerance of that B plus guy might be a little higher. Maybe he's willing to act on less perfect information because he's not used to having, you know, this incredible, you know, just perfect thing his whole life. I mean, I think there's something to be said for me. Were you a B plus student? Uh, I feel like you were an A plus student, Braden. I don't no comment. You went to you went to law school. Uh, oh, don't let that He's uh, an A plus guy, no yeah. doubt. You were a four O student in Clearly high school. Clearly I'm guess. Braden this can smart. read faster than any human. You, you won't know. tell us that cum from high school? It was it I'll was tell you mine. Above it, was four? it was healthy. <laughs> I bet it, I bet mine was better. It probably was. Yeah. yeah. Did you did you go honors? Were you like four point two? Yeah, man. I mean, I had like twenty credit hours going into college. Hell yeah, let's go. I didn't even know what a credit Anywho. hour was in high school. So yeah, a college I mean, degree. What's up? Yeah, all that to say, you know, yeah, you just you just have to do stuff, you know, like it, the doing needs done, you know. It's you a, you actually have to do it for longer, much longer than most people would ever think, you know, too. You yeah. also have to find your passion. Though. That goes back to the passion because if, if the passion is, you know, building something that matters, you can push through a lot longer. Which, I don't know if I'm convinced of that. But, we, <laughs> but, but like if you hate what you're doing, if you hate with your entire, you know, being what you're doing, it's going to be a lot harder to do that, you know, get up and do that hour every day or whatever. When we've talked about this on the podcast a little bit, but when I was in the phase of thinking maybe I would leave S2 and I got a different job. Yep. Stripping. And, and uh, <laughs> I still remember the Instagram post you had about that. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, I was, I was going to go work in, you know, uh, commercial insurance and, and basically do that for a company called Federated. And uh, I, I sat down with Kim after I decided to do this and I remember I was, I was still living in Edwardsville, sat down with her and she looked me in the eyes and she goes, um, you're really going to sell insurance for the rest of your life. She's like, you're a meathead. You're a meathead. That's who, that's who you are. That's what you are. That's what you like doing. And she's like, you can say that you're run down and that you've been overworked and that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And all the, all the, you know, pity party you want to throw for yourself. But at the end of the day, you're a meathead. And this is what you like doing and yeah. you're not going to like insurance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of people forget though, that one of your big advantages though, was you have a 10 out of 10 wife. Yeah. Like, and I'm true. not talking looks. I'm talking about like the person. Hey, she she's is. a 10 out of 10 too. What? Boy, she, no, no, she <laughs> is. Be little. I, mean, I don't want to <laughs> hit on Tim. Kim, I, I, what you were saying. You know what I'm saying. I knew what you were saying. Kim, Kim's yeah. a beautiful yeah. lady. The quality cool. of the person is a 10, you know, Kim, that, and that's why I love Kim, you know, because she makes those, she made that comment to you, you know, oh. you but are like, this, but like that, that's why having somebody in your life, whether it's your, you know, your wife, your dad, whatever it is that can give you that feedback is so important because that had that conversation not had happened. There's a, there's a more than you know, 1% chance that you would have had a completely different outcome in your life. Oh yeah. You know, that changed, that would have changed the course of your whole life. Yeah. And here's the thing is most people like when they, they go home every night in, in the position that I was in where I was just stressed out and they complain to their significant other. And so when they come to that, you know, conversation, their significant others like, yeah, get the hell out of there. You know, you're, you're miserable, blah, blah, blah. And she, you know, just had the foresight to be like, you're just not, it's not you, you love this, you know, and you're going through a period that's rough. You're working, you know, freaking 80 hours a week. And, you know, you have a lot of responsibility in what you're doing right now, but it will pass. And it did. Well, I'm totally off topic, but that's why that decision is the biggest decision in life. Who to marry, you know, if Mm -hmm. you're going to get married, right. It's like, you need somebody that's going to be a partner. However, that relationship works out that makes you better. Yeah. And what's funny is during that time, her life sucked too. Yeah. Like because of my life sucking. I remember. Yeah. I was making her life suck pretty bad. And so, you know, to be she, fair, like we look back on those times and you don't look at it as a time that it sucked at all, right? Like dude, for our listeners, no. let's not pretend. I was like, no, it definitely it, sucked. It, no, Bro, like, I no was, there was a grind. I'm just saying that like no, it was also the, it was, the grind is also just a time you look back on and you're like, man, I'm glad I did it. Oh, right? I'm glad I did it, but it sucked. Yeah. And, and it's going to suck. And if you... It, if you have big aspirations, no matter what you're doing, you have to under you have to go into it knowing that it's going to suck at p- points. Yeah. Like if you have it this, should feel like sacrifice. If, if you if you have this thought in your head that you know, I agree with the passion comment, but if you think your passion is going to carry you through everything, you're wrong. No, no that's some, true. At some point, you have to have dis- discipline, and that was like the point in my life where my discipline was wavering the most because I was, you know, working friggin' 80 hours a week. I was doing all of our back end stuff. I was training every person. If you guys remember at this point, I was training every person that we were hiring in St. Louis. And, um, I was also working in the busiest store that we had. And I just was like, I felt like it was, I was in quicksand and it was depleted. Yeah. And so, you know, that was like the, the, the breaking point for me. And it, you know, like, but it built, you know, this is something I tell my guys too. It, those, those built the calluses to when we opened up in Kansas city. Oh, I got to work every shift for a year. 
no problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Easy yeah. work, you know, because yeah. I went through a period in, in my life that, you know, basically built those calluses. And I think you can do that in any business, you know, and that you that you are working in is you just have to go through periods where you want to quit and you'll have periods that you want to quit if you have big aspirations. Well, yeah, that, that goes back to the volume thing, you know, yeah. the only way that you uncover that is by volume. Yeah. You know. And also realizing when you get to that, whatever that stopping point is, there's more. Yeah. Because like I've done jujitsu for years and there's people that get a belt because that's how they measure whether you you know improve or whatever. And then they just disappear. You're like, what happened to Jim? Like, I don't know. He got, you know, promoted this thing. Now we, we haven't seen him at the gym for achieved nine Achieved what months. he wanted to achieve and he was like, good. Yeah. But it was like the level of achievement was so low, but that was just, he just wanted that just so we could tell people like, oh, I got to that and that was it. <laughs> and I'm like, what Strange. are you doing? But it happens in business, happens in life. Like, oh, I got promoted to manager. Yeah. I, I basically stopped trying. Yeah. There's Settled. a lot of people that do that. Yeah. You know, it's okay that. to stop, but it's not okay to stop trying. You know, like mm -hmm. if you're content with where you are, that's fine. But what is not as not fine is, is not trying and not holding yourself to a higher standard. There's there's a guy uh, that I follow that's a CrossFit athlete, Noah Olson. And he's yeah. got a saying, happy, uh, hungry, but happy. Yeah. So it's like basically... I'm, I'm content with where I'm at, but I'm also driving, you know, to, yeah. to I'm driving for more as well. And he's kind I, of a baby face, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. He's a very handsome guy. He's a good looking Kind of like Phil, yeah. you know? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I got some, uh, I got a question I was going to ask you earlier. I was going to have your guys' opinion on this. I talked to a new business owner. He came from the financial world, had some money saved up, wanted to get into business, started his own. Sorry, I didn't start his own. He just started to start a franchise that was fitness uh, focused. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, he, you know, where he was at, all the market was taken, mm -hmm. right? So he heard that, you know, Kansas City was a good market. He'd give that a shot. He lives in Dallas, Texas, and he has to travel here to get it going, right? He's hired some people here, et cetera, and things aren't going as smooth as he'd like so far. Yeah. Okay. What advice would you give to a guy like this? Because he has never ran this business in his, in his own right. Yeah. And he doesn't have anybody here that's going to take ownership in it. He needs to move here for a year. Because I mean, that is, that is the only truthful answer, you know, anything else I think is just like, you know, a mirage of just like, you know, that's what I think. Um, we, we had this long meeting and I just kept going back to like, I don't know what you want from me here, man. Like, I don't, you want, you you want, I don't think do you understand. You I was like, Kyle and I had nine years of working in the business before yeah. we decided to open it. And so whenever we did, whenever we worked at it nine years for corporate, it's like, we didn't have any kind of guessing game as to what to do to get started. Of course. And so the same concept goes back to like, hey, man, you just got to live in time under tension. You're going to have to live and breathe this for a while because how's anybody going to follow you if you've never led? Well, and yeah. the challenge, right, is he, he's, he's got a double whammy. It's, right. He's never done franchising, period. So he's like probably new to that sort of level of team leadership and sure. all that. So it, it's not experience can't, you know, he, he yeah. doesn't have that component yep. to make up for any of the shortcomings. And then right. two, he you doesn't know? know the brand itself. You can do mm -hmm. distance stuff more successfully. If you know the brand, you've got people you trust, you've got, and if it's established, right, yeah. this is kind of a new concept. So it's not coffee, right. Where it's like, there's already a built in, you know, desire for it in the market. It's like people have to be, you know, have to come in and experience it to understand it. But that's the challenge. That guy's probably in a really awkward spot where he knows the answer. But sure. it, it's going to totally upend his oh, and, life. And he's moving here. Yeah, he's moving here. Yeah. And he's going to have to sit. And he's like, that's, uh, that's good. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. No, like, but that's all, the right choice. Obviously yeah. rooting for him. But it's just, it was wild that, like, you know, it's like, is it going to have to come to this? And it's like, dude, it's the only way. Yeah. Not only is he going to have to move here, but he's going to have to do every single event that is fitness related on every single weekend for the next foreseeable He's future. prepared for that. He's prepared yeah. for that. For because sure. it's like, if you have a novelty, if you have a novelty concept, you have to get in front of people and you have to be the one explaining it back to enthusiasm back to like having mm -hmm. passion about what you're doing you have to be the guy that's doing that because you can't hire somebody that's going to talk as passionately about you know a new concept as you would what's the last fitness novelty that you guys can think of that's really had some staying power orange concept theory? Uh, like fitness wise i mean yeah. orange theory is phenomenal but that's almost a tech play because they're doing the same thing everyone else is just with a better tech platform that's really easy Pro to use proprietary as well yeah um I'm trying to think i'd say peloton uh, man they're not doing so hot right now but, no but my god I but mean, they leaned in heavy during covid and i think you know that was a great great play by them but they're like gopro where it's like you buy it like i have a peloton treadmill same i have and, a peloton bike i have a bike yeah. yeah but you let's say you love it mm -hmm. you buy it once and the subscription gets you see i just think it's unlikely that's that that's a repeatable action at least the way that i see things and the way people behave i, I don't know I think it represents a small percentage of people, you know? I don't Kyle disagree. I think, I think you have, it's hard to compare it, unfortunately, to 
this wave of popularity because of COVID, I think it puts them into an unfair comparison. I think that if you just took out the COVID numbers, it would still have grown steadily. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but, but their no, problem was like they, they ramped up product. They made all these decisions based on a, a growth trajectory that was unsustainable, but they thought it was. So to your point, had they done a normal sustained growth model, they probably would have worked out. It just they wouldn't have had this huge you know, influx of cash and all this other stuff. And to the, and to the same point, you know, we've seen us also with, um, let's say, fitness uh, trainers or coaches that have, you know, large, large followings starting in groups and so forth. Like you'd think like would that tailor off after COVID and it seems like those have, have, have consistently at least stayed the same. Yeah, but the difference is I would say community is bigger there. M- much better. Much yeah. more local well, too. People crave community, you know, they, yeah. they crave the connection, you know, well, that's why CrossFit works. You know, Agreed. I mean, you go there and you know people and you, you know, cause you go to CrossFit and you know, those guys you train at noon or whatever every day. And I go to CrossFit. Well, yeah, but I mean, Kyle looks like a CrossFit. I got to talk about CrossFit at least once every podcast. Jeff yeah. loves it. Yeah. <laughs> so it wouldn't be a approaching bros podcast. We at least talk about, I mean, at least like how Kyle, how many thruster, Kyle, how many double unders Kyle did during Fran, even though it's what not about a workout crossovers? that would have yeah. double yeah. unders. I got a crossover. We're, we're migrating to the cross. Yeah. You know, I just got hang, shoulders are burning from his handstand pull-ups yesterday. Whatever. Yeah, I did some handstand I mean, push-ups today. There was a I point of pride that happened recently that, you know, Lindsay called me a CrossFitter and I was like, damn. That wow. Nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I took my shirt so off. I got that going like, for me like, I always tell more, I like to be more of a fitness person, but if you want to call me a CrossFitter, I'll take it. Hybrid athlete. Hybrid athlete. Here's, here's, I've been trying to get you to come train with me, but you, your damn hand. Well, I'm going to fix it one time. I got a new doctor, Kyle. So I'm going to get in, get in and fix it. He's duct, tape your, duct, duct tape your arm down and just take a hammer just, to it. I could just jujitsu with one Look arm. At, put your hand on this. Let me no, see this. No, so the camera dude. could see it. It's not, it's not a. He's got a molehill on his hand. It's not a, a cyst, dude. It's yeah. actually a bone spur. Um, it's so from, if you, it's if from you, fitting too hard. If you knuckle. did that, if you hit me. I would, it would bring me to tears. <laughs> Anyways, what I was going to say is this isn't a fitness concept, but this is a product that I think is just like one of those products where you're like, damn. Shake weight. Nope. Well, we, we, we did, brought that up. We did talk about shake weight wrap. last, but the wrap. no, no ice bath. Beautiful. That is the one. Oh, he's, he's a big ice bath. Beautiful. Ice bath hey, hey, Phil was a first mover. I know. Dude, I got to be honest, guys. Phil was like, the first I've been doing this for a long know. time. Yeah. yeah, he deserves um, all the credit. Phil was the first plunger any of us knew. Yeah, I but mean, I've been plunging about, for four years. Like, I got the, I was one of the first customers of, of Plunge.com. Plunge. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Think about How it. How did you just, hear it? Was it Aubrey Marcus? Who was your first? Who who influenced you? The minute I got my first house, I was like, I actually wasn't motivated to buy the house. I was motivated to buy the plunge. I was like, I have enough space to to have this plunge. And so I was like, all right, what's the best one? And it seemed like this was the best product at the time. So I'm like, give me that one. But how did you, I mean, like, here's the thing, like, we don't doubt that, like, you know, I mean, you're on the up and up as far as, but how did you even come across it? I get really tired really easily. And the one thing I found over the years is like, if I can, you know, bring my temperature down, if I can get some cold exposure, like kind of, you know, it heightens my nervous system a bit. So I'm like, oh, I've always seeked that out. So I've just been obsessed with it for a long time. The first time that I ever heard about cold exposure was Rhonda Patrick on, uh, Rogan, Rogan, probably yeah. in like 2000, I don't know, 16 or something like that. Yeah. It was a lot. It was before the real big wave had happened. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you, you listen to something like that. They're telling you the stats on like what it does, you know, for serotonin and what it can do for like hormonal production. And it, you know, it kind of went in one ear and out the other. And, um, what's crazy is somebody listened to that and they were like, I'm going to do that and I'm going to make that into a business, which is really cool. I'm going to take a bathtub. I'm going to chill it. <laughs> I'm going to chill I'm gonna it. sell this for 20 grand. Yeah. The fun story it. is unbelievable. It's a, I mean, it's a really, really fun entrepreneurship story, man. It's amazing. How they, how they got, st- they were a total bootstrap company. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Ryan and I mean, what's the other guy's name? Shouldn't, I don't know. Yeah, they're great dudes and they're very front facing to the brand. And right. you know, they're in all the advertising. They just came out with the plunge sauna, phenomenal sauna. I'll probably get it at some point. Oh, yeah. Not right now. The sauna, the sauna cold and cold plunge combo. Yeah. It's a good combo. Yeah. It's a great combo. Michael Garrett and Ryan Dewey. Yeah. Michael and Ryan. Yeah. They're both awesome. Michael's like six, five or six, six. He's a real big, tall guy. So, you know, for him to get in the, you know, fit at the plunge, like they had to kind of, you know, create one that was. There's Lengthen no doubt it. that's going to have oh, some no. staying power. There's going to be a lot of quitters. There's going to be a lot of them on Facebook marketplace, all the different iterations, ice barrel. Yeah. Ice you know, rubber tent or whatever, you know, there's a million different kind of iterations, but obviously the plunge I think is really killed it as far as coming across as the nicest. There's actually one that's local to Kansas city. We need to have them on. It oh, really, it really Jake Hebner just got sponsored by them. Show it. Show that's it off. true. Luke, go yeah. to Jacob Hebner's 
uh, yeah. Instagram. He's one of our former uh, guests here. When I looked at it, I you saw the one that Jacob Hebner's got. Yeah, it's thirteen k. The plunge. There, there. His That's like, a there's a, there's a, there's a Kansas City, I think Overland Park based company that started making cold plunges, and it looks pretty baller. It yeah. looks nice. I mean, for thirteen thousand dollars, it better be. Certainly better be. This is called a Believe. Oh no. I don't know about that. <laughs> oh no, that's a, that's a good looking corgi. As a corgi owner, I just want to yeah. point that out. It looks like they got <laughs> the, a good looking corgi. Honestly, it looks like they got a lot of inspiration from Morosco, which makes a great cold plunge too. By the way, mm-hmm. but their structure of the tub is more Morosco asking. It looks like there was ice in there, unless it was it was formed unless they put ice in there. I think that was ice. I think it's all cold, and then he added snow from oh, okay. outside. Yeah, but anyway, I don't know the the. Back to your, I guess, loop back to like your original question. The fitness stuff is tough because a lot of it is just, it's very transient in my mind. You know, it's tough to repeat the same thing over and over again. Um, so who knows? I don't know if the cold plunge stuff will stay. You know, we never know. I mean, look back to history and we'll see, you know, it's usually the best predictor of what happens in the future. It, it'll be but. interesting to see. I, and I have heard more people talk about cold plunge that aren't like quote unquote fitness people. Yeah. Um, but I mean, really, it'll be interesting to see how much penetration it gets into the you know, general population. Permanent the spa world, I think, for sure. I think it's going to stay around to have a the amount of like spas I've been to that have um, cold baths now or cold yeah cold tubs that they've converted from being a hot tub to a cold tub. Yeah, because which like is crazy. Yeah, man. the spa world. I think there's always going to be a place for you know having that cold exposure too. Yeah, do you think it'll do what the sauna's done though, where it becomes something that is so comment at the gym certainly that not. it just becomes no like, it's, it's just sauna. too uncomfortable sauna is too comfortable well, i mean it's it's pain like you're you're basically trying to tell people to, to you know have a better relationship with pain you know? yeah, yeah can you make them a little warmer yeah have you ever yeah. tried to do that <laughs> you do like you know <laughs> well, it's kind of like, boil- like hot yeah. ice you know like yeah. like boiling a lobster you start it at like you know yeah. 90 degrees and then just drops drop it yeah have you yeah. seen uh have you guys remember the jacob's ladder yeah this equipment yeah. yeah that's an example of something that like clearly works clearly difficult Absolutely beneficial. I did that once and I was like, and you're like, yeah, that sucked. I'm never doing that again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know, man. It's just, are you going to climb up a ladder thing every day? It's just tower. It's not repeatable action. And on top of that, you certainly don't look very cool on Instagram doing it. No, no, no. It's very monotonous. It's, $6,000. $6,000. Right. Yeah, but uh, if you put, like, a weight vest on and you do that with, like, one of those uh, high-altitude masks, like, you could look pretty legit. You, you would look. You can do it like a crab walk you would look while shake insane. waiting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's coming from a guy that doesn't even have abs, but that's not, it's neither here nor there. Oh, I have abs. No, you don't. I didn't pre-baby. Guys, I've been working back on abs it. are made in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Just saying. So. Yeah, Pillsbury Doughboy doesn't have them, does he? Because no. that's who, he's, who he sponsors. They all got them. You just got to show them off. <laughs> Everybody's got them. Hey, that was, right, that was right after one of my hey. surgeries, I think. That was, that was when you were 12. Uh, showed hey, you. Everybody had abs when showed you were 12. You, hey, that was after surgery, too, by the way. Yeah. He said, I don't know what happened here, but I just woke up with that. like, hey, look, dude. You you want a four-day fast. Of course you were lean. Oh, my God. Have you guys done the uh, 72-hour fast? Uh, No. I struggle with the seven-hour fast. (laughs) But, I mean, I I fast every day, you know? So that's I'm a big proponent of that. But uh, I don't know. It's it's weird how people get in these, like, it's all just, like, transient stuff. Like, fasting's not this new thing. Certainly Mm -hmm. not. You know? And then, like, uh, Dana White talked about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just like, guys, you just did a three-day fast, like, Okay, you know this isn't some trans transformative thing. Well, it was know? it was weird to hear how was how he's saying it. Uh, I think I'm Phil. doing all, I think I'm doing all right, hey, Braden. Jack I think Phil. I'm doing okay. Look at him; he has nothing to say. He's like, man, that's that's facts right there. Yeah, I just yeah. noticed the pants to hide the the very slender legs. Thank you. You don't want to be <laughs> standing that. next to that guy to the right and showing off your legs. I you know, know what I'm saying? That guy looks like a you don't want to guy. Uh, you don't want to stand next to Braden in a leg off there. No, that's not no. fair. That's not very fair. No, like yeah. yeah, honey baked ham. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, do you want? What's funny about it though is like we talk about all these things. But really, you know, if you want to figure out how you're doing, it's it's all blood work anyway. You know, mm-hmm. you get you work with Gillette, I work with Gillette Health. Like those guys are great, and you know, you deal, you get all your stuff done. I know you do, but I'm it's like Ka- I'm I'm with Gillette now. Yeah, yeah, but it's like if you can get that done, you know, kind of irregardless of some of the other stuff you're doing, you can get a really good picture. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, don't get in depth blood work done. And we were joking around about testosterone levels and stuff before this, but the reality is that number, you know, not just testosterone, but all of those levels are really what you can look at over years and be like, okay, I'm doing the right things for me, whether it's fasting or cold plunge or sauna or, Mm -hmm. you know, CrossFit or whatever. You know, it's a good match for your, your body's natural tendencies. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is kind of, you know, a lot of people go with, you know, whether it's fasting or any of the things we've been talking about, they just kind of see that and they're like, oh, I should try that. 
you know, and like yeah. I said, they don't have the data on the backside of things to know whether it's worth trying that or not. And it can be, it can go from feel to yep. blood work, you know, you know, quality of life. There's lots that goes, that goes into that. I'm sure that you started fasting because of like, you know, the way that your day is set up, you just wanted to get up in the morning and go, right? Yeah. Like I just, but then feel, you're like, Oh, I feel better. I feel right? tremendously better when I don't eat. And yeah. that's not true for everybody, but you know, that's why you should try it. If it works cool, if not move on, yeah. you know, Stick with what works for you. you whatever, know? whatever you're doing, just be intentional about it. Pretty much, yeah, and make you know, make sure the you know the number of things doing you're doing are controllable, and that you can repeat them over and over again. You know, not this like fleeting thing that people tend to have, especially in fitness. You know, that's a sad Health. part. Yeah, by not seeing a result immediately, like, give up. You didn't get overweight overnight, so it's like it would be unreasonable to think that you would be you know you lose weight overnight. So, yeah, you know, are you asking the universe to be unreasonable? Mm-hmm. What about you the know? weight loss drugs though? Because those are big now. That's like just a straight cheat well, code. We actually had Kyle Gillette on the podcast talking about Ozempic. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> People had the balls to like try and argue with him in the comment. He's like, I know more than you. Shut up. <laughs> he well, yeah, say Kyle, that. I mean, Kyle was on Andrew Huberman's podcast. Yeah. Right? yeah. Exactly. yeah. So know? he talked about Ozemp Sick. He's like, you're going to see a Netflix documentary called Ozemp Sick instead of Ozemp. Yeah. Is that actually being made? No, no. He's like, you just wait, you know, because yeah. it's just unfortunate that, of course, like, you know, these things are. My dad asked me. That's my dad's 72 years old. Yeah. He's, He's like, I need to lose 15 pounds. And I was like, eat less calories. and gastroparesis is part of that. All that are gastroparesis risk, which is a newest risk, which is a paralysis of the stomach. That's just where it's not low downstream of the pelvis. Part of that's just due to less food. So if you went on a diet that is a similar calorie diet, often you do that and you're consuming these huge amounts of fiber. So your stretch receptors bind and it's going to create some problems. What wasn't the takeaway basically so that he recommended it if you absolutely need this because you're yeah, whatever morbidly yeah, obese it's, it's, and it's going to help you do The way it. that Luke cut it up made it seem like he was completely shitting on it. And he wasn't completely shitting on it. He was basically saying this doesn't need to be like. It doesn't have to be the new. It doesn't need know, to be the blanket. Yeah. Thing I need to lose doing. seven pounds well, after my. It's not the third. Atkins diet. It's not HCG. It's not. It's just it's 100 percent specific to the person if they need it or not. Yeah. And people are for the thing. Yeah. Like, I got a text message this morning uh, from like a auto text and it was like, uh, is it, what's the uh, technical term? Like a semaglutide? Mm-hmm. Sem- semaglutide? He's yeah. like, you know, it's like semaglutide weight loss uh, prescription, only, you know, forty nine ninety nine or something like that. And I was like, oh my God, the money grab that's going on right now. Oh yeah. It's sad too. You know, you're basically, you know, manipulating people on their health, which I don't stand for. But it's, it's human nature, man. The, we've been through this, you know, this is my 17th year. Doing this and the amount of, um, it just doesn't change in the sense of people are always going to be looking for the shortcut first. Yeah. They know the truth. We could tell them the truth. It won't matter. They're going to see if it works first, right? Like I'll only do the work if I absolutely have to. And so there's always going to be a new thing every year that people are talking about that they can try versus just doing what they know that needs to get done. Yeah. And I think, I think we both view this from the same, same lens. You know, if we can make a little marginal effort, you know, a mar- little marginal level improvement, like we've done well. Yeah, you know? the only thing that sucks is, you know, as long as we've been doing this in the fitness industry, the, the obesity level still continues to go up. So we, you know, we're taking little chunks out, but it seems like there's backfilling more people <laughs> than it, we can yeah. keep up with. Which is great for so, our business. Yeah, I mean, do you think, it is. Do you think it's a split, it's, though? Do you think what you're getting is you're essentially getting one part of the population that's skewing towards true, massively unhealthy choices, and then you're getting this other po- part of the population um, – that is skewing towards, you know, massively healthy choices in the sense of like, they're taking all of the advantages now, Yeah, you know, like they're doing the yeah. ice plunge they're getting their, their blood work done. They're eating, you know, whatever they feel is the best diet based on some research they did. I can speak for our culture. You know, I'd say like, just cause we're obviously very close to some other companies. So, so forth, yeah. we can see how other people are living and it's like, man, I'm very proud of our company. My gosh, the oh, amount yeah. of people are, that are taking advantage of, you know, what's out there is un- incredible. You know, mm-hmm. the tools and, you know, Andy 75 hard program, the amount of people who've changed their lives using it, 
um, has been astronomical within our company. Yeah, yeah and I so think it's just us, it's crazy to see is all. Yeah, uh, it makes me it makes me unbelievably proud of what we're doing. You know, whether it's on the kitchen side, whether it's on the supplement superstore side, you know, the goal remains the same. Is like, you know, how do we change people's lives? You know, in the form of food or in the form of supplements or fitness. You know, mm-hmm. call it. Um, and I think that's a noble thing to do, and I think you should continue doing that. I agree. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's been exciting to watch these things happen. But when you see that data, it, it definitely feels deflating at times. You know what I mean? It's a, you don't want to get hung up on it, but you're like, man, I really thought we were making a do-, you know, and we are in our local community. But mm-hmm. you know, it just goes to show that we need to open up more of these, and that's just the truth. Yeah, you we know, need, we need to spread we need to spread that message as much as we possibly can. Yeah, it makes you realize how little market penetration you actually have for the good message, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's just the the message of how to be healthy, how to optimize your health, how to do stuff right with supplements or food. You know, we take it for granted because it's part of our life every day. Mm-hmm. But there's so many people that the opportunity is, I mean, it, it is literally never ending. Which is awesome, you know, because it's just, it's an infinite progress. Well, and it's a cool thing, right? Because in both businesses, supplements, food, you know, trying to drive healthy change, you know, we only win if the people that are using our products, using our services, you know, succeed in what, in a lot of their cases, are things that are truly going to add years to their lives. You know, and there's a lot of businesses where a win is incredibly superficial. It's just one more, not knocking this, but it's just one more purse sold, or it's just one more, one you know, more, you know, thing. Yeah, just widget. One more quantity. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. you know, I think we could all agree, you know, if we could export this to a hundred times the people, you know, we would succeed wildly in our entrepreneurial goals, but more importantly, we would do so aligned with hundreds of thousands, millions of people. Wildly huge impact. Yeah, yeah. That are that are doing things that they would look back and say, hey, that was a, a positive influence on my life. And that's really unique in the business world because there's not a ton of things that do that. The fitness industry is kind of there. Um, but I think it's 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 something we should really be thoughtful and proud of that we have the ability to to make that positive impact. And also honestly, like make money and do well because of it, which is cool. It's cool. It's aligned. Yeah, it is nice that the, you know, we, we can look our guys in the eyes and be like the, you know, the better help you give people, yeah. the healthier you get the local community, you know, the, the better our company is going to do and the faster your progress is going to be within our company. Dude. And the, some of our best mm-hmm. customers, it's like, yeah, they've spent thousands of dollars. They might've lost a hundred pounds too. Yeah. And they went from being able to barely chase their toddler around the yard to now they're, you know, coaching the softball team or, you know, they're running marathons with their son or, you know, whatever it is mm-hmm. just because they finally made that transition. Yeah. And that's sweet. So, yeah, we have a, uh, a question we ask all of our guests here, guys. This is a good segue after talking about health for so long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You guys are creatures of habit. You, you guys, guys are going to have good answers, though. I do, I do agree, especially because we got a local here in town right here with uh, Phil. But we have the same question for everybody, and that is simply Kansas City is a barbecue town. You got one You got one choice. You got one cheat. Mm-hmm. You're done. You know, can't give it, go anywhere else. What's the, what's the barbecue spot of choice for you? It rhymes with clickety-clack. <laughs> Jack stack? Jack, Jack stack for both of us. For both of y'all? Oh, yeah. Come on now. Is this even a question? Hey, Which one? Hey, we, we, Lee we're, Summit? We're no, fans he, of Jack Stack. Hey, I like I like Lee Summit. You know, I'm partially, you know, those outskirts. Downtown. The Dude, Mar- here, here's the, the thing about OG. Jack Stack. I, re- I really appreciate it. You guys are in food, so this is a really strong opinion. We got to hear it. You know? No, I appreciate you know. that Jack Stack is not just good barbecue. They're a good restaurant. Like yeah. the entire experience from top to bottom is. The great principles of their business. Yeah, and the guys that own it are good guys. We know them. Like the whole business from top to bottom is really impressive. They also do a ton of food where they ship it. Like the whole business model from a business side, from the people running it being good people to like literally like are the restaurants clean? Are they nice to eat in? You know, I, I think both of us. Just They're really a well-run like, machine, man. Do really mm-hmm. well-run. And yeah. but this is really interesting because some people don't like them because of that. They're like, oh, they're too big. And it's like they're too big. Because they do everything right. They try hard. They keep people. They pay people well. Like Yeah, I guess they don't yeah. go to Chick-fil-A either, right? Because they're too big and they're, there's too many. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that right, dude. That's yeah, but yeah. people are weird about uh, barbecue in Kansas City. I totally get asking, that. Asking uh, this it's a, question. It's just a contrarian answer is yeah. all it is, man. They just want to be like, well, I want to seem like I know the inside. You know, I got the inside scoop. I know this yeah. really small place over here. And it's like, dude, let's be real. The Jack's Tech some of the absolute best barbecue you could possibly get in the country. Yep. Not just in Kansas City. Yeah. Plus, Jack Stack's a great place. If you like barbecue, you can bring, you know, your oh, family yeah. or whatever, because there's some other stuff. Totally. It's like, oh, they make this great salad thing. And Whereas, it's a good ambiance. You know, yeah. a lot of well, a lot of barbecue places, it's like if I'm not gonna bring my family to a place where you gotta wait in line and you're getting it on like a red yeah, tray. And it's like a picnic table. Yeah. yeah. Do, you you know, gotta, do you guys have a close second? 
I was going to say, like, I do want to recognize Arthur Bryant. I think it's a phenomenal place. We don't get a lot of love for Arthur Bryant's on here, Phil. Let's well, tell, tell I, us. I've about been here it. for 33 years, so I think my opinion has some weight. I'd go. I'd go Q39. I agree. Q39. That's I mean, what, Arthur, what a Arthur normal. Arthur Bryant's. Life. I need to give more of a chance. I've only went once, and I was just underwhelmed personally, and so like I just probably need to give it a shot. What What are your alls? I actually don't know your alls answers. Is it yours, Gates? No, no. Honestly. I like slaps. I, I, I'm actually almost even though it's opposite of what I just. I, said. I don't know if I've been to. Not I don't know if I've been audience. to Gates and and and, and um, ever been genuinely impressed. Okay. With any of the the meats or the foods that I've eaten, and I want to like it, right? And it's yeah. actually really close, and I like that it's open late and all this. But no, I mean we love. I mean I love Q39. If I had to pick one, I would say it's yeah. probably my overall best experience. But they did get rid of some of my favorite menu items on their on their menu. They don't have any cornbread anymore. Weird about that. Uh. Dude, I would go on the tour. Like, we have lots of people that will give us, like, six different places that they go for certain things. But for all in all in one spot, I think Q39 knocks it out of the park. And here's the thing. We had a different guest that was on recently, um, Haley from Fit Truck. Yeah. She hit me up. Yeah. She's like, what was that place for wings that you were talking about? And I was like, well, we think the best wings are my, maybe at Jack Stack. The fire kissed wings at Jack yeah, Stack yeah. are, like, game so changer. Good. That yep. is without question. That yeah. is an they're, absolute fact. So good. They're so I don't even like good. wings, for Christ's sake. But they're yeah, so that, they're the right unique, answer. right? They're, they're like, from the grill, right? Yeah. You can taste that smoke and that char on the wing. But then when you talk about Q39, they have the, the best dams wing on the planet on their menu. It's called that. And they're breaded. They're a totally different kind of wing. And they're, like, fucking awesome like life-changing yeah. good and you're they're totally menu, different wings so it's like good. whatever you're in the mood for you can't go wrong with either of those dude so you're a q39 damn get the wings jack yeah. sacks my favorite wings with blue cheese yeah, sorry about the white sauce but it's good is there something you guys think in your mind you being here in kansas city for so long and i obviously grew up here is there something that kansas city needs that we just you know we haven't is there a need that hasn't been met food wise or just really more shit to do with kids when it's zero degrees outside Okay. Activities for kids, you know, in low temperatures. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would honestly love to see um, Kansas City get another professional sports team in the form of an NBA team or an NHL team, personally. Man, I think the potential is there. I, I agree. I Especially, think, uh, we got Mahomes here. Mahomes is pulling I hard think, for it. Yeah, man, I think that um, we don't have any kind of basketball team in the Midwest outside of um, Oklahoma City, which is the newest NBA franchise. Yeah. You know I mean, I think Kansas City has a strong, strong vote for that. They've tried. They've tried for years, you know. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, St. Louis doesn't have one. Some of the best players in the NBA come from St. Louis. They don't have an NBA team. What, what's your uh, What's your opinion on the uh, old Kaufman moving? I think and, it's great for the. I think it's great for the community for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I think unfortunately, you know, uh, results speak for themselves. And you know, if the team is still bad, um, that's still the problem to solve. Yeah. You know, but that's a troubling thing. You know, right? But I think for the community, you know, and getting people to enjoy kind of a new experience around baseball, I think. If you look just a couple hours down the road to St. Louis, you know, going to Bush is not pretty comparable. Phenomenal. Yeah. It's a pretty phenomenal experience because where it is, you know, so if we can do that and make our, our community and, and city better then yeah, I think that's the move. How do you boost the local economy where it's at right now? You just can't, you don't. And, and it's There's beautiful for Arrowhead, right? Yeah. Because we have the best, I mean, we have the best fan base in the whole NFL as far as I'm concerned, but a lot of that's because of where it is and how, you know, we can tailgate all day. Yeah. And that's just not, it's not reasonable to do, you know, anywhere else really. And here's the other thing, uh, you know, here's a fun, like, this is a hilarious story, actually. I don't ever partake in any form of like internet banter, mm -hmm. but one time I just literally couldn't help myself <laughs> on this Facebook post about living, uh, opening a downtown stadium. Everybody's like, where are we going to park? Like, how am I supposed to tailgate? And I was like, you're not tailgating 82 times a year. No, no. it's a novelty. Well, people don't understand it's too, a, like a baseball game, like Wrigley, you go yeah. to Wrigley. And the whole point is the game is like the jumping off point. Mm -hmm. and, and then you're going out for the night. Yeah. It's a social. It's or, a social or vice gathering. versa. You're going out through the day and you're ending it there, right? And, and you might not even be at the game the whole game. You know, it's like if it's a blowout or something, it's like you leave in the seventh inning, you go to this nice dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, the economy's here. It's fun. Like, it's I just tried to explain all of thing. that to any of the, 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 the trolls of Facebook and it, no one cared. The hard part, though, is if you <laughs> live downtown in an apartment yeah. that's $1,500 a month, you know it's going to double on that block if it's right there. So like, mm -hmm. I think there's just different yeah. viewpoints of yeah, like lots of, yeah, lots of things at yeah. stake as far as what people are arguing over. People are just like, where am I going to park? Where am I going to yep. park? It's, because that's the <laughs> easiest thing to point at. Right. Yeah. Like, we used to have this like massive, 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 endless amounts of parking. And now it's not going to be as easy. And it's like, well, we have a free street car, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, like that's going to take you right to it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's, that's why I don't go to, downtown. Lots to talk about there, but yeah. Dude, yeah. I live down. So does Jeff. You live yeah. downtown. I mean, it's, I like it. I think it's going to be an awesome addition. I can't wait. I hope to God it passes, but we'll see. Yeah. I think it will for sure. You know, Public's I think it's going to vote on it in April. 
Yeah, I think it will, you know, and I think it'll help. It'll help sort of um, kind of balance, you know, how poor the team has been over the last few years. But, you know, makes it a much more social event. Yeah. Oh, I also want to say this is totally unrelated, but I also want to say you guys should be incredibly proud of what you guys have done for Kansas City as a community. You know, because I'm a Kansas City guy. I've been here for, you know, grew up here. I was born here. And you guys have done just a phenomenal job in the fitness space. And that needs to be recognized every day, especially today. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you, man. Seriously appreciate it. I that. feel like, you know, we got a lot more work to do and, you know. Work needs doing. Yep, work needs doing. But, mm-hmm. yeah, it is It is. Uh, it is nice to, to feel like the fitness community is – doing our part to to try and make the fitness community more cohesive and not have such a you know separate mindset as far as like gym to gym and you know different mm-hmm. trainers so trying to remove the ego from fitness in yeah. this area and make everybody understand that it's about actually getting everybody on the same page everybody healthier everybody on getting results you want more people There's room for in, everybody here to get you want more people in the fitness community you know mm-hmm. and so I also think people are capable of just so much more, you know, and it's, it's almost our job to, to tell them that, you know, yeah. hey, you're capable of so much more mm-hmm. and here's how you can do it. Yeah. You know? Couldn't agree more, man. That's awesome. That's a, I, I'd love to end it right there on that. Appreciate you Thank you guys for coming man. on, man. Where can people find uh, Kitch? Where, where are you guys located at? And you two, know? Uh, two physical locations, one on uh, 83rd and Mission, Prairie Village, and one on 135th, Metcalf there in Overland Park. You can just drop in anytime you want. We carry meals fully stocked in the coolers. You can also go on www.getkitch.com. So getkitch.com and you can do a la carte. So essentially like pick up at the store or we also have memberships for delivery in the area or memberships for pickup. So plenty of options. You can kind of figure it out on the website. But, you know, I would just say if you are interested in trying to find really good, really high quality meal prep, I tell everyone this, you know, the easiest thing to do is just go in and try once. And I want to say, you'll love it. Let's also say this because I just thought of this. But in the Northland, if you guys are living in the Northland, you can stop by Arizona location and they'll have some kitchen meals in there for you. Yep, they got yeah. a fridge, um, mm-hmm. kind of a drop off location for us. They do a great job up there. Easy yeah, way to at least give it a try. Yep. For sure. Yeah, and later this year we'll be expanding the delivery. Delivery is only membership based. So if, if you do um, if you do want delivery, um, you'll have to sign up for a membership. Um, you can find all the information online. We will be expanding that radius to Blue Springs and Lee Summit here yep. um, the next handful of months. Exciting. Right now, yeah. it's basically south of downtown, so downtown, south of the river, um, and then kind of out to Missouri, a little bit into Missouri, but we're really looking to, to try to grow that just because we've got an, a bunch of interest from over there. So, um, Yeah. Stephen Sarah Stewart. Yep. I was about to say, who who on yeah. earth would need the it out in Blue Springs? Yeah. Brass Armadillo, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you ask you know, Braden's you know, wife, Ariel, about Brass Armadillo? Huh? Getting the word out. Oh, she uh, loves it, yeah. yeah. Big antique here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, that's where you can find us. And uh, we have two locations there, you know, Prairie Village and Overland Park. So. Yeah, well, thank you guys for coming on, yep. man. Love you guys. Appreciate Thanks you. for being here today. All right. Love you too, too.